កាតតិងរំចាំចាំឯកសារនេះខ្លាកំណាចអុបលុកពិភពគុណនៅជួបគ្នាវាទៅដីខាងកំបោលទទួលស្វាគមន៍អ្នកត្រងដែនមកពីចាស់ខ្សែក្រវាត់អ្នកហូសថាប័នស៊ីណានឆាឡាដណ្ដើមជើងឯកពីភពលោកឯកអេសខេអេគុនខ្មែរទំនុនជិត เนี่ยประยุทธ์มาชมบอเปียเบ๊ะโดงกุนขมายเอเลียอาสกาจวบต่อตุลคลาจ๊ะจงกอปื้อพรสวรรค์เจออ King Kong Pikit, Sun Kun Kamai, Nabong Sweet, Napukai Kandabai Mukdan, Ye Yidung, Mopi Satin Narod, Nisahapi Miyama, Mohakai Lokun, Ni Wirapa, Hau Mechan, Bahaduman Kriyapu, Yani Mazuni, Mopi Satin Narod, Raja Kapatai, Prajiman and Alzeri, Kandabai Plain Mando, Louis David, Troop Jung Kamai, Labai Kaklang. GFC ออกในกูมัตตพิเศษตุ๊ดโปรดลดฝากรถทีมมาละกันสายตอลแล้วก็จอดตรวจตัวบีทีวียูนึ่งตัวเฟซบุ๊กเพลกาครมหุ่นแ
รุบหนุ่มเนาะมีนอาชีรัวฉันนี่รอโหดนำหน้าจ้องกรอยบูสตรองพาวเวอร์พลัสคลังฉันนี่คลังฉันเนี่ยบูสตรองพาวเวอร์พลัสพาวเวอร์ทูวินปีตะขมมเฟรสซี่ยังเทนยังทนาไหมเลือกปีตายจุดพระประดาน <Nee> ี่แน่เซ็กตรลายเฟรซี่ฉันสลอสไลด์ตรจแจ๊ดเฟรชชี่วินเทอร์เมลิน refreshingly cools ตัวตัวบีทีวีอยู
nước t h ụ p o r Facebook t h ơ i cả c r o m h ô n Game s e r v e t h ụ p o r Facebook BTV News จับปีมองปรับไปยกโตตึงโจรวมตัวสนาดาวเชรีนเลอดในโลกใบวัดสกุลไปคันกระบอล g a m e s b e r g พลัดดอยเนชุนีญาลมองสมุยงันกอมรัดปีพบโลกแอนส์เบิร์กอเมซิ่งเทสต์แอนส์เบิร์กอเมซิ่งเทสต์ปีศาจโดยการตัวทุกข์โคตรเทรนด์การตัวทุกข์โคตรเบูสตรองพาวเวอร์พลัสปรับพุทธามปุลปรับกุลจูเนียรุกดมนาะมีนอาชีรูปฉันเราหดดมนาะจงกรอยบูสตรองพาวเวอร์พลัสคลังชงังคลังเนียบูสตรองพาวเวอร์พลัสพาวเวอร์ทูวินปตขมฟรสิอย่างฉันยังอันนั้นไหมเลือกไปตายจุกพระประดาแล้วว้าวนั่นคือฟันตาสติกที่เห็นไหมครับ
John Nutt, Raphael on the English commentary, Bayon TV. This is Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir, April 7, 2024. History in the making as we have not only championship Kun Kamir action, we have championship ISKA action. Three titles on the line. And this is the first time where a um, large foreigner is doing some of the referee. Tommy Hayden will be in attendance, former UFC fighter, and uh, he'll be refereeing. First time a foreigner has ever refereed here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. You should obviously go there. PP Cambodia is on the hot, on the hot spot. Everybody around the world is talking about it, and if you're a fighter, you need to know why. It's because Bayon TV is putting on five shows a week that are, are just on another level, Raph. And then we get to do these, Gansberg German Premium Beer. The Brewmaster is here today. He is in the mix. You can see it right there. There's going to be 30 to 40,000 people here. And Raph and I get to sit in the best seats in the house for seven extremely entertaining Kun Kamir matchups. That is correct, John. Just like you said, history being made today. Three ISKA belts up for grab here today. And just like you said, Tommy Hayden, yeah. first foreign referee in a Kun Kamir show. History being made here in Phnom Penh. Correct, but that's not really what the story is. You know what the story is, and I know what the story is. Fight number five, fight number six, and fight number seven are all for ISKA titles. The uh, faves of the people that are here are obviously Bunsete, Cambodia's own Bunsete, who we've seen multiple times here at Idol Kun Khmer. And of course, it is my first time seeing Sen Chandriti Kun, Cambodia and uh, Brazilian national now. And I think you know him and I know him better off as Diego Teixeira. Yes, yes, yes. The very dangerous veteran Tiago Teixeira making a comeback after not fighting in 10 months. Right. The people here very highly anticipate a comeback. Everyone is here to see Tiago fight and so are we. So are we. That is correct. And it looks like we're going to be bringing out the boys in orange, the Gansberg boys, the MCs, the Bruce Buffer brothers of Cambodia. We'll hand it over to him as you can see the drone shots give you the heat. The hotness, the flames, the fire, it is all happening here, PP Cambodia. Let's turn it over to our hosts with the most. ចូលក្នុងកម្មវិធីប្រដៅដល់អស់ចាដែលអាចនិយាយបានថាជាទំព័រថ្មីនៃប្រវត្តិសាស្ត្រគេងឡាប្រដើមគុណខ្មែររ
John, all the BFPs being shown today. Yes, correct. These guys are just giving love to the sponsors right now. Gansberg, Idol, Bruce Strong, Freshy. They're all in the house tonight. And, and even, you know that my favorite person is here tonight. Yeah, is I he? I know, I saw him. Oh. The Brewmaster is in the house. Gansberg Brewmaster, probably one of the best German men on the planet today, living. And definitely one of the best here. As we rise for the national anthem. And we shall rise. Truly an international event here this evening. People from all around the world are coming here as Kun Kamir is being put on the map in the martial arts world. And uh, as you can see right now, the brewmaster is coming down. You can see right there, Tiago, otherwise known as Sen. Chandriti Kun. Uh, main event of the night. Obviously, he's going to be shaking hands with the man from Gansberg. Gansberg, Freshy, Boost Strong, Idol. These are the guys that are making it happen. But of course, we got to give a shout out to Bay on TV. BTV, please go like and subscribe to everything Bay on TV and everything Idol Kun Kamir. Grow the sport, grow the game, and support all things for those that do. Bay on TV, Putin, Kun Kamir on the map now let's hand it over to the brewmaster himself i can't believe he's in the ring raft starstruck there he is in the world ตัวนี้ก็ตรอกគ្នាแต่มีบทเสียงในที่นี้หนึ่งเนี่ยได้ตรวจลงคุณเข้ามายังออกใครนี่ชื่อมหาพฤติกรรมประวัติศาสตร
and for being part of our journey for so many years. Let's cheer with Gunsberg. ជាចុកក្រោយយើងសង្ឃឹមថាអ្នកនឹងរីករាយជាមួយស្រាប់ពីអាកាសបើកផឹកស្រួលស្រួលផឹកផឹកស្រួលគឺផឹកហើយស្
It's basically an SUV. <laughs> yes, it is. The Cambodian SUV. And or the Gansberg motorbike. Again, each one of those, you're right. Raffley was correct. I, I thought there was only a couple winners. No. Everybody there. Championship action with those championship orange and black motorbikes right behind them. The colors of greatness. The colors of Gansberg. John, imagine that going on. You come here, you you start coming, you just want to watch some fights, and you leave with a brand new motorbike. I know. Dreams do come true, Raf. And that's all because of Gansberg. German for beer. Again, fresh as a daisy when you wake up. That's all you can ask for. Make sure you guys go out, like, and subscribe to everything Bayon TV, everything Gansberg, everything Idol, and of course, everything Boost Strong. These are the guys that help promote the sport and grow the game that we so love. Idol Kung Kamir. Brewmaster's coming back down. Some of the lovely ladies of Kung Kamir behind him. And of course, our Cambodian Buffer Brothers, the host with the most, the MCs to the nth degrees, are inside that orange Gansberg ring right now. Idol Kun Kamir about to take off here on April 7th, 2024. Seven bouts, four friendlies. Cambodia, Cambodia. Cambodia versus Malaysia. Cambodia versus Algeria. Cambodia versus Myanmar. And then on bouts five, six, and seven, we will step up to ISKA title action, championship action. And that will be Iran versus Thailand, Cambodia versus Malaysia again. And of course, our superstar, Sen Chandriti Kun, hailing from now Brazil and Cambodia against Sinan Kagala who hails from Turkey and Raf is saying that he's possibly the nicest guy back there. Sweetheart of a human being. John, an absolute sweetheart of a human being. The entire time I spoke to him backstage, absolute gem, gem of, a, of a man. He trains out of Venom in Thailand. Oh, yeah. He is 36 years of age. He has fought at numerous weights. I've seen this dude fight at 100 kilograms while he was only about 90 so he gives up weight this guy's a veteran of the sport and that is great because across from him will be tiago another veteran 100 plus fights the people's champion here he in cambodia correct i mean the people of cambodia we've been out with the guy a couple times you've been training at his gym i mean personally we went out for mexican food last time we were here and we walked down the street and everybody wanted his autograph i mean it is no lie that he is kind of a cambodia known superstar right uh it's interesting walking around with fighters and having people coming over to them on the streets and that's how big Gansberg has really put Tiago on the map, I think, uh, again, whereas we thank him, he should thank us, all the thanks should be together, we all grow together, right? Um, but I think what you're also saying, Raf, is that tonight, Tiago, Sen, has his work cut out for him, right? Yes, he does. He's not going in there against just another Gansberg can, right? He's going in there against a guy from Turkey who, like you said, he's a centurion, he's had 100 fights. Actually, Tiago has about 100 fights. The man from Turkey has about 50 fights now. 50 fights. 50 again, fights. No, no slouch. And, and again, what championship belts does he have? I know we have a Krabi Stadium champion. He has the Highland belt as well. Uh, and he is the Honey Badger, right? What a name. I love the name Honey Badger, right? Great name. Honey Badger don't give a what. You know that. Honey Badger don't care. No, doesn't care at all. And now, John, just like you said, the Turkish fighter Sinan is no slouch, he's no tomato can, and that just speaks to the caliber of fighter Tiago is. He could have asked for an easy fight, but he didn't. He wanted an even fight, and that's what he's going to get tonight. Now, John, our first fighter coming out to the ring from the blue corner, the Cambodian fighter, Riti Malakang. Riti is 22 years young. Standing in at 165 cm, he weighed in at 57 kgs. 38 fights to his accreditation, 25 wins, 11 losses, and two draws. 14 KOs in the power hands. And again, this man is coming to play. I love the young 
young guys that are coming up in the sport, trying to make a name for him. Riddy Malakong, we've seen him here before, but again, these young come-uppers, they're so hungry. They want those cars. They want those motorbikes. They want the praise of the country, and they want to rise up, and they can see how it's done. And now his opponent coming out of the red corner, Touch, Ross Nutsch. Raf, give us his uh, tail of the tape. And I shall, John. Touch, 25 years of age, 163 centimeters tall. Fighting at 57 kilograms. He has 56 fights, 38 wins, 16 losses, two draws, and five KOs. Very evenly matched fight for our first opening fight here, John. Both weighed in at the 57 kg weight limit. And as you can see, the referees, the judges, they will go over both guys as they don't come out with the gloves. They come out with the wraps on, but we will go gloves on those Red and blue Gansberg gloves getting thrown on there in the corner. And as I've, Raph and I have noticed over the many Idol Kung Kamir shows, I just find it interesting when they're taping up right there in the ring, right? I mean, that's the, the straw, right? The camel's back is going to get broken. It's game time. The gloves are on. Put the mouth guard in. And let's do this. Time to bang, John. Right? Our uh, lovely head of officials going over the referee in charge and the three judges at ringside, which if we go the judges distance, it will be after three, three minute rounds of action. But John, how rare is it to go to a judge decision here? We have seven fights this evening. Are we gonna get two? I'm gonna say two. That is a Fair. conservative estimate. These Cambodian fighters, they come to fight. They come for a knockout. Remember, they are only fighting three rounds here. From the first bell, they are going. They are looking for that knockout. Just like you said before, John, these young fighters are hungry. They want those motorbikes. They, they want to be inside that truck, the Gansberg truck. Yep. They want to drive away with that. They want to fight tournament. They want to make that cash money, and they can. This right now is a golden era of Kun Khmer. That it is. I, I couldn't agree more. They're hungry. They're sharks. They're sharks in the water. And so is the chum, right? Who's going to smell the blood? Who's going to roll their eyes back and just bite into it? First bout of the evening about to get underway. 57 kg. Remember, three, three-minute rounds of Idol Kung Khmer action here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. The capital of it all. You should go there. Introductions being done by the Cambodian Buffer Brothers now. Both fighters will shortly begin performing the Kun Crew. Pre-fight ritual dance to show respect to their gyms, their families, and to the beautiful sport of Kun Khmer. Ritty getting his flowers from the announcers who will exit. And again, the Kun Crew will start up. Kun, Kun Khmer, one of the few martial arts that still keeps the traditional values of the Cambodian martial arts yeah, the by doing the Kun, the Kun Crew. Beautiful to see, John. And as you've talked about it, I mean, as a fighter, I personally enjoyed doing it. Limbers you up, gives you a couple minutes to think, get your get your game your game hat on, right? Exactly. You play into there. And again, it really does limber you up right before going out there, right? I mean, again, you've already got the the liniment on, the oil on. You're already you're you're burning. Your mind's concentrating on your opponent. What you're gonna do when you come out in the first? But you get to really uh, with that kung fu, you really do get to focus on what's gonna happen. I can see again the red corner, a little bit older fighter, the 25-year-old touch. He's just walking around, casually making eye contact with the fans here at ringside. Again, the production level here of Idol Kung Khmer, kind of on another, another plateau, just another standard. Huge LED screens. Again, around 30, 35,000 people in attendance, as we've been told, and it is. Just wonderful to be 
and John right on 35,000 people and going back to the fighters if you can dance in front of 35,000 people you can punch each other's face in front of 35,000 people yeah for no, sure brother. no nerves needed for that both fighters finishing up their crew and we are seconds away from our first opening bout touch brush notch versus Riti Malakang both Cambodian fighters Raf, it's about to set off. Game time here. Again, Gansberg Idol, Kung Kamir, 7th of April, 2024. First friendly of the evening. Blue corner, Riti Malakong, Cambodia zone. And of course, from Cambodia as well. Touch, Prosnuch. 57 kgs of thunder, lightning, and all that power. You know what I mean? About to, about to come together. So much power, John. These Cambodian fighters have dynamite in their hands. Every single Cambodian fighter that we've come to see, heavy-handed. Yes. And here we go, John. First round on the way. Touch of gloves. Here we go. Round one starts off. Both guys come in swinging and banging already. You can see, once again, these guys are going to have to put their combinations together. The kicks above the, well, above the waist score more. Those lower, lower kicks. I don't know if the judges will go after them. And again, remember for the punches, you really have to you really have to knock the sweat off the guy's head. You really have to cause some pain for the judges to score those. A little laugh off there from Ritty as he gets a combination to the body and the head. Again, looks like he's having a great time. The smiles on faces doesn't seem to be intimidated at all. Uh, and he's definitely trying to take ring control, staying up on those toes and putting in the work. Both fighters exchanging the right hands. Ritty, of course, being more smiley, but so is Touch. Touch is also enjoying himself in there. Both fighters still trying to feel each other out, but still landing some heavy punches to each other's faces. Left kick from Ritty, but that right hand counter from Touch. And again, normally they don't come out and feel each other out. And as he backs him up into the neutral corner, goes for the teep up. And Touch. comes up with a high kick as well. I would say again, they are feeling each other out. They've decided to, to keep it a little casual here in the first round and not just throw absolute grenades at each other. As the referee tells them to get back to action, they're stalemating each other a little bit. I don't know if the styles have uh, clashed but again, Riti Malakang, he just seems to be content brushing away that that teep and going for the overhand right. Uh, uh, overhand right. Touch really living up to his name and really touching up the face of Riti with his hands. But Riti un unbothered, keeps pushing forward, landing a right hand over the top of Touch's left body kick. Ritty just keeps coming forward, trying to find some some sort of offense. That's a that's a good teep by Ritty. It's a little bit of low blow. We do care about procreation here in Cambodia, so <laughs> yes, we do. Right hand lands for Ritty, being shaken off by Touch. Touch very common there. It does not seem as if either of these guys are trying to take it in the first round. We, we normally see some killers come in here and absolutely don't give it a tryout first round. Both these guys clearly have come to feel each other out. And the action will pick up, I'm sure, in round number two. As again, Riddhi Malakong is put back on his back foot, brought into the red corner. I'm not seeing the punches and bunches and the volumes and the combinations coming out of touch that he normally goes with. John. That will do it for our first round. Both fighters, of course, feeling feeling each other out in the in that first opening round, but still tra trading a lot of leather, a lot of punches yep. being exchanged, a lot of counter punches being landed by Touch. Touch, in my opinion, winning the first part of that round, and then Ritty coming back and winning the second part of that round. How did how did how did you see it, John? Uh, again, yeah, I, I see it fairly similarly. It's it's tough to be a judge on a, on a round like that with both of the guys kind of casually feeling each other out. I would give it to Touch only because I feel like he actually put uh, Riddy on the back foot there. Riddy again had was brimming with confidence, right? Absolutely fully there. His eyes are 
bright and wide and bushy-tailed and all that type of stuff. He's the first one off of his stool over here. He's jumping up and down for the audience. But what I'll say is, again, it doesn't matter. That doesn't score points. You're still allowing your opponent to come in with that teep, still allowing your opponent to come in with that overhand right. So for me, I would still give that round, that first round a touch. But who knows? Again, we got two more. Best of three, if you will, bud. Yes, we do. In that first round, touch landed a big right uppercut and created an opening for a long combination there. But also, touch was doing really well by landing a teep to the face. He landed about three teeps to the face. I I'm with you. Uh, we, we saw him have the biggest combination of hands there, and he did have the biggest power punches in that round. So, for those reasons, you know, my, my little squid game brain when I'm playing it out there, I got touch. But, again, fight is not over until either the big fat guy in front of you like me yells or the last bell serenades us with the end of the fight again the guys are both up off their stools very early we go three minute rounds with two minutes between the rounds correct so again just getting the last bits of massage and stretch work done and we will start up in just another moment with more of Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir. John, very interesting. Both fighters were up off that stool super early. Very quickly. Ritty looking like just having a walk in a park, very calm. So is Touch. Both fighters very calm. Lots of experience, of course, from both these fighters. This may be just another walk in the park for them. I'm excited to see round number two. I think they're going to really pick it up. It is a three round fight. Agreed, Raf. One of these guys needs to implement their game plan and take it in the eyes of the judges, though. If, you, if, you, if we go all three rounds like that, that's going to be a uh, monster one to, to score. And I don't think you will be disappointed, John. I think this second round, both of you are going to pick it up and really look for that knockout. Aggressive Cambodian fighters, that's why we're here. Kun Khmer. That's why Kun Khmer is growing. These fighters are aggressive. These forwards come... These fighters come forward and they're here to fight. Yes. Ido Kun Khmer again growing the game. Let's look at re replays. Touch getting touched up by the hands of Ritty. But Touch coming back with hands of his own. That switch left kick moving back. Beautiful technique being thrown by Touch. Seconds away from our second round. Look for Ritty to come out in the second round. Put a lot of pressure on Touch and Touch to move back and try to counter. Lovely ring girl. Gansberg ring girl, of course, without them. How would we know what round it, it, it even is? I mean, it would be just too confusing. But luckily, we have her. So we're all winning. She's absolutely crucial to Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer fight. I, I, I would have to say so. Again, she's doing a fantastic job. She's letting us all know round number two is coming up. She will go between the ropes. And again, we will start up the action as the referee brings him in one more time to touch gloves. Sportsmanship, the cornerstone the cornerstone of all Kun Khmer. And, then, and as you were correct, Ritty coming in with that overhand, trying to get up off of his feet, right up on his toes, smiling. Very, very odd stance and style from Mini, Ritty Malakon. I, uh, I really enjoy that. He's got his head movement going on. He's looking like he's having fun. He's trying to dance in there. Touch coming up with the head. They're in the neutral corner, and they are touching each other up. Big! Right elbow tried to land right there. And let's see if the elbow battle comes into play. Back in the blue corner, raises up the legs again. Non-stop action here, Idol Kun Khmer. Ritty really just pushing forward here, using our right hands and then turning that into the elbows. Touch needs to step back a little bit, create a little bit of space, find some arsenal of his own. But, Rit but Ritty is unrelenting, he's coming forward. Here we go, 
about 30 seconds in. Rithi has slowed down a little bit, given Touch a little more time to line his shots. These boys are traded and the crowd is loving it. Yes, the crowd just got a, a big swell right there as the return elbow, right? He spun it and juiced him. Looks like it's just below the eye. He's up, he's saying he's fine, but that is the blood, baby. The blood will come and the smile is still on his face. He's all good. Clearly he is there, but a mouse, and not a mouse, an absolute rat has just grown underneath that eye. And with the blood comes the sharks, right? The chum is in the water. Let's see if Touch can goes at, go after that mark. A lot right more on. calm, a lot more. Right on, but Ritty, who just got knocked down, he is now the shark. Even though he is cut, he's coming forward. He's trying to land the elbows, trying to get this round back. He's really looking for the elbow, big right elbow missing there, but he keeps throwing it like a short, just comes forward. Little slip there for Ritty. Still has the big smile on his face is Ritty, who's just trying to control the ring, touch a lot more calm, a lot more calculated as he comes with the returns. Again, if you're judging by the judges' scorecards, although Ritty comes in with that elbow that we'd love to see land, because he keeps missing it and that huge rat underneath the eye. Blood is going. I gotta say that the judges are gonna be in huge favor of Touch Ross Notch on this uh, on this second round of this first bout of the evening. Gansberg Idol fight, Idol Kunkamir. Richie showing lots of heart, John, but he's not setting up those elbows. He's just trying to knock down Touch and Touch now has calmed down, he has found his pace, he has found his range, and that will do it for the second round. Beautiful control there by Touch at the end, especially in that spinning elbow as Ritty was coming in with that forward pressure. Very, very smart, calculated fighter yeah. you see in Touch. Round number two in the books, and again, Raph, I would, I would have to go with Touch. I just feel like he was the mo more composed fighter. Clearly caused more of the damage in there. And I mean, you, you saw, right? The round ends, he goes over and gives it up to the crowd. The crowd responds to him. You can see he's a lot more just cool-headed, right? Is the way that I would describe him right now. Whereas Ritty, again, smile on his face the entire time. Even when he got juiced with a spinning back elbow, causing him to start leaking. But he's still having a good time. You can see he's over in the corner. They've got a little bit of the... Uh, the liniment that they're that they're trying to blow into his face, give him the smell, the, the sea salts, if you will, the smelling salts. A little and bit again, up. you can see that mouse underneath the right eye, and it is growing, swelling like the crowd here in Cambodia. I hope he doesn't try to blow out his, I don't know if it actually hit his nose, but you could see him and his uh, corner man right there trying to blow out the left left nostril and I hope he doesn't do that because that's gonna make the swelling under that eye just inflame. You can see again that landed a target and Touch now has an absolute mark that he needs to put into his game plan just keep landing right on that. Raph I mean again where, where do you see it going? Touch is up is up by two rounds now. Ritty in that second round was doing really well in the first 30 seconds. He kept landing his right hand, and then he landed elbows off his right hand. After that knockdown, he went away from that and just tried to find the elbow. He was throwing the elbow blind. I know. He needs to go back to what he was doing in the first 30 seconds of that second round. He needs to set up his elbows using his hands. I'm fully with you, bro. Again, I love a guy that's gonna throw that downward elbow as recklessly as he was, because who doesn't love that as we go to the replay? The Gansberg replay we see. He was trying to stab that elbow, but it just didn't it didn't land. And at the end of the day, it even caused him to slip. There it is. There's the spinning back elbow. Crushed it right under the, the uh, right eye. Lands on the cheek. You can see that did away with that smile real fast, right? He was smiling all up until then, and then boom, juiced it out of him. And there it is. Look at that glorious mouse under the, that's like a New York City rat. You know about those, don't you, Raph? That's yeah. like somebody from Queens right there. <laughs> A <laughs> yes, rat I, from Queens. Yes, I do, John, but probably but probably more from the city, Queens. Yeah. Queens, we we ain't got rats, bro. Hey, oh. <laughs> Good right, chunk go. of Vaseline 
on that cut right there from the corner man. And again, both guys getting ready for the third and final round. But before they do, we need to bring in the Gansberg girls. At least one of them needs. I don't know what. I don't know what round we're going into. Oh, number three. Don't worry, Ralph. She let us know. I believe her. Round number three coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, watching around the world, do not get lost in her in her eyes. <laughs> Beautiful hair. Beautiful hair. Beautiful hair for sure. Here we go. Round number three. Let's see what Ridley can pull out here. Third and final round rings on this uh, first bout of Gansberg Idol Kunkamir, April 7, 2024. Riddy Malakang in the blue corner. Touch. Ross Notch. And again, shaking on the head. I love his character. I love what he's trying to do. But he does need to land and score in the eyes of the judges. We're going first. Bashed up his head right there. Caused a little whiplash. Lands two more. And now they are trading, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner. Referee will break them up. Raph, again, he's going for it. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to start landing that right hand just like he's doing. And he keeps landing right hand. We need to see that again. And he needs to mix it up with the right elbow as well. But now Touch, as soon as you give him some space, a little bit of breathing room, he's able to find his counters, find his space. And this is what he's doing beautifully. Behind the jab, moving back, counter left knee, deep to the face, create space, faint, 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 move. Beautiful stuff here from Touch. And then again, that space that you're talking about, he's controlling the range of the fight, which means he's controlling the fight. I mean, the, the range that he's using right there, great overhand right there's happened. Basically has turned into a boxing match, but every once in a while you see him pick up that leg, keeps him off. Slipping a fall right there from Ritti. He's back up, says it was a slip. Ritti still Again, smiling, still smiling, still loving the fight. Still pushing forward, you love to see this. He knows he's down two rounds, so he has to go for the knockout. Switching into southpaw now, Ritti. Left kick to the body from Ritti. Still trying to apply pressure here late into the round because he knows. I, I think he actually knows. And again, Touch deciding to use that range to stay away. If he can just win it in the eyes of the judges, he'll move on in the Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir World League, if you will. We'll all remember the name of the 25 year old who's come out here to put another win in his belt. The cup is having a problem. Again, big smile, ear to ear from Riddy. If there's one thing I can say about this guy, it's that I like his character, I like his style, I like his moves. He's having fun in there. But he is getting juiced more. Touch just got caught with a big left hook. But he's okay, he's still controlling the range really well. On the back foot, but a right hand! Staggers! Touch! And Riddy coming forward with the right hand again. He's gotta go, he's gotta throw the right hand to the body. Right hand uppercut, baby. All oh, right wow. hand to the hook. The crowd getting behind Ritty right now, John. A lot of fun happening here right at the end of the round three. This is the third and final round, but uh, Ritty is not giving up here. He's smelling blood. He wants to go in there. Touch doing a great job of staying safe with the range, trying to win this in the eyes of the judges. But I found it very, very amusing right there. That big overhand right as the end of round three and the end of the fight comes to a conclusion again great job by touch staying away with the range but man you got to give it to ready boom that big overhand right at the end there that's what we were checking out the gansberg replay and that was the story of the night it was that spinning back elbow causing his opponent to just leak and again both men in the ring right now as we're still taking a look at the replay both men in the ring right now cheering and vying for the fans applause again another fantastic uh, Gansberg replay that shows how at the end of that they both laid leather on face it was just touch that I feel landed a little bit more and of course you can see the blood on Ritty's face kind of gives you the decision as we go to the three judges at the Gansberg rings uh, deliberation we go to their scorecards what a character he is right they're laughing right there with the uh, referee. Ready Malakang. That guy is happy. Yes, he is. And John, not a bad fight from Ritty. He really turned it on in, in the third round. That right hand kept landing. But 
touch was just a little bit ahead. He saw the punches come in a little bit more. He was able to evade a little more and counter punch a little more. Very evenly matched fight. Very fun fight to watch and commentate on. Both, both these guys winners in my book. But personally, I think Touch was able to etch it out. And there it is. <clears throat> Not much of a surprise. Touch scored a knockdown in the second round. Being ahead in both first, second, and third round. Doing really well with the distance management. Great fight from Touch Brushnuch. Yeah, again, Touch the uh, winner. But I will say, I mean, Ritty for me, what a fun guy, what a fun fighter. I mean, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed the entire time, smile on his face ear to ear the entire time. Uh, again, just a very entertaining fighter. I wish, like you said, he, he really brought in his in his A-game in the third and final round, just a little too little too late for uh, what he needed to get done there. As you can see again, the crowd swells behind us. Gansberg, Idol Kung Kamir here on April 7th. First fight of the night in the books. As the guys head up that ring by the LED screens, the crowd is absolutely going nuts for them right now back over there by the bikes. Raph and John Nutt on the English commentary. I would again like to remind all of you watching around the globe to like and subscribe to everything Bay on TV, Gansberg and Gansberg Idol Kung Kamir. Grow the game and support the sport that we so love, the AO8, the art of eight Kung Kamir. And again, if you have the chance, Raph, should they go to Cambodia? They definitely Everybody should. Everybody should. They definitely Everybody should. Everybody should. John, look at that crowd. Everyone is coming here from around the villages, around the city, bringing their grandmas, their aunts, their uncles, their kids, kids on shoulders, moms on shoulders. Everyone is here. And you should be here too. John, let's look forward into our second fight of the night. We see Cambodia taking on Malaysia. Do you know much about Malaysian fighters? I do. I worked uh, for Malaysian Invasion for many years. Again, on the southern border of Thailand, that, uh, that area has fantastic fighters. Um, uh, again, the whole peninsula, even including Singapore. Come on now, they got some good some good fighters uh, all, all around. Um, the rise of MMA in Malaysia has somewhat slowed down because I believe Kun Kamir and other martial arts have come in there and they've really grown. They've gotten very big into kickboxing, right? They like the kickboxing. Right. They like to eliminate the elbows and the knees, keep the range there, try to have some blast off KOs. But it's not like these guys don't know how to use their elbows or knees. And so when they come over to here and play in Cambodia on the Kun Khmer level, you know, again, it's gonna be some fun. It's gonna be some heavy action. Anytime we put Cambodia and Malaysia together, it's gonna be a good time. So Sha, GFC Malaysia, 21 years young, is gonna be coming here tonight. And again, at 21 years old, with 61 fights, it's not gonna be a slouch. Definitely not, but his opponent, Touch David, the Cambodian, 22 years of age, 62 fights. So these guys are pretty even. Second touch of the night, by the way. Yes, See what I did is. there? I'm punny. Very, very punny. Yeah, Touch David versus Shah. GFC Malaysia. Cambodian Buffer Brothers are going to welcome our fighters right now. And again, Cam's Everything you've ever wanted in a Kun Khmer show, I will tell you that right now, Raph. Gansberg, Idol Kun Khmer, 7th of April, 2024. The Buffer Brothers of Cambodia in there, the host with the most, the MCs to the next degrees. Tell you what, these guys know how to introduce a fighter. Yes, they do, John. Yes, they do. They're the best in the business here in Cambodia. They've been doing all the Gansberg Idol Fight shows. Like, like you mentioned when we opened the broadcast, Bayon TV has 
five regularly scheduled shows every weekend. Yeah, that's like a message for fighters around the world. Raf has a huge message for fighters around the world. Bay on TV does at least five or six shows a week in Cambodia. So for fighters around there, around the world, that are like, yo, where can I get into some, some action? Come here, come here, do, do a three week little adventure to Cambodia. And in that three weeks, go visit the gyms. See who's out there to train. And then know, like Raf has just learned, right? You're gonna get, get in, the, in on the action as well, right? Exactly, I have moved to Cambodia, to Phnom Penh this, uh, this month, and I will be fighting in three weeks or so. Three weeks or so, on, on, Bay, on a Bay on TV show. Of course, Bay on TV, the best TV network here in Cambodia, having the best fighters, and I, and I will be honored to be on Bay on TV. I'm so excited to see you in action, and again, on Bay on TV, these guys are putting together some of the matchups that we all wanna, wanna see, but it's more about, more than just that, I gotta, again, it's like a, you and I know there are not many places in the world that you can go where a television station of this accreditation uh, is allowing fighters to have five shows a weekend. Where the pay, just, you gotta say, it's in the USD, you know? Here in Cambodia, you go buy two currencies, the real, keep it real, 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 real. And obviously, the greenback, the US dollar. And uh, people are getting paid in it here. They're making some good money for some sh fights that are, again, going global, right? Getting people internationally known. Uh, the, the one on this card that could obviously attest to it, newly named Sen, Chan Kun, Tiago. Again, the guy has become a superstar here. John, just like we mentioned before, this is really the golden era of Kun Kamara yeah. in Phnom Penh. Five shows, weekly shows, on Bayon TV. Yeah. That is 20 shows a month. Now, as compared to back home in America, in New York, one month, one show. One month, one show. So, I mean, you do the math, do right? The math. I mean, again, come on. Come over here, visit us, visit us in Phnom Penh. Cambodia, you should go there, obviously, right? If you are an American fighter, I. I, I know how hard it is for you guys to get fights. Come down to Phnom Penh. Search me up, hit me up, let me know. I'll, I will take care of you. Come fight here in Phnom Penh on Bayon TV. The absolute best fights here going on for Kun Kamer. And as you can see right now, first fighter coming in this second bout, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They take it away from him when he does that little stumble and fall. He's not afraid. No, he's right? not. He's not afraid. As you can see there, the drone showing the action and the swelling, just like that mouse under the eye in the last fight, the swelling of the crowd. We started the evening, probably like 10, 15,000 people here at the beer gardens, the Gansberg Beer Gardens going on here. About 35, 40,000 people here right now. Absolutely swollen as the man from Malaysia pops into the Gansberg ring. And John, it's just gonna keep on getting them bigger and bigger as the night goes. There are still small spaces in the back right now, but those will be filled in by our fourth or fifth fight. Walking out into the ring now, the Cambodian, our second touch as John had yeah. mentioned before, Mr. Touch David. Touch David making his way down to the Gansberg ring as well right now. Both these guys very young. 21 year old for the uh, Malaysian, 22 years old for Touch David, the Cambodian. Again, both of these guys waiting in at the 60 kg fight range. The tail of the tape will be shown in just a few moments. But basically, again, 54 wins out of 62 fights for Touch David. Whereas 49 wins out of 61 fights for Shah. And John, pretty even records here, and that's what you want to see. That's what makes entertaining fights. Correct. I don't want to see a guy with 60 fights fighting a guy with 10 fights. No. Takes two to tango. Styles make matchups. And uh, again, we should give Satun his, his flowers. Guy makes some amazing international matchups, right? In, in the Kun Khmer level. Satun is one of those guys that he sees everybody, he's taking it in, he's an encyclopedia. And he's trying to get synergy. Synergy comes from having good dancing partners. Good dancing partners, two dudes that know what their abilities are in the ring and can match each other and play. I want to retort 
If you punch me in the face, I want to reply with something else that scores more points and more pain so that I can win it in the, not only the eyes of the judges, but everybody here in Phnom Penh, if I can't, take you out. Absolutely, John. And that's what a fighter wants. A fighter wants an even fight. Right. A real fighter doesn't want to just walk over through some opponent, have an easy first round KO. They want a challenge because that's how they get better. To be the man, you need to beat the man. Ric Flair, drip go, woo! <laughs> right. And now, both these, both these boys, very experienced. The Malaysian fighter actually living out in Thailand, training in Bangkok. Yeah. He is a Krabby Stadium champion, and he's actually an elbow forward fighter. Likes to use the use of his elbows. He's been talking to that about that to both Raf and I. And again, Krabby Stadium champion, no slouch. Obviously, has had some experience in both the motherland and over here, trying to get on his name out by the Idol Kun Khmer fans. Let's see what the Malaysian can do when he comes in to the home territory of Touch David. I'd like to just mention Touch David's mustache, best mustache in the ring right now. It's, 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 it's soft flow, it's soft power. John, I want a mustache now. Oh, John. Soon. I know, maybe you. Maybe. You could do it. Get a Gillette sponsorship, I think, right? <laughs> Who doesn't want one? I definitely need. I definitely need a razor. Gillette. We got 270 here. stash in there. We got 270 stash in there, and it's really which which stash is gonna mash. Ooh. Mash and bash on the stash game. Mash and bash on the stash game. Well right. said, John. Well said. Literacy again. Very interesting mon call on the Malaysian fighter. Yeah. A cobra on top of the head. Yeah. Very. An ornamental cobra. I look at him flexing, looking strong in there in the ring. Shah GFC hailing from Malaysia. Nagara cool to all my Malaysian brothers and sisters out there watching us on the BTV. Again, YouTube giving us that English commentary with Raf, myself, John Nutt. Make sure you like and subscribe and share to all things Bay on TV, Gansberg, and of course, G Berg. I go. Kun, come here. Go to the uh, Kun Crew. The music that again shows off the tradition, the culture, and the respect of not only the other fighters, the gyms, but the ancestry of this ancient martial art scripted on the walls of Angkor Wat over there in Siem Reap, another place of Cambodia that you should totally go there. And touch David, touching all four corners, including that blue corner right there. Like you said, the Mong Kong headpiece of the Malaysian warrior looking cobra up, flexed as he does another little slip and smiles at his <laughs> smiled at his corner man because he not not you guys didn't see it because the cameras changed, but he had a nice little fall, a little he had a nice trip. I'll see him next fall. Hey -oh. <laughs> Oh, what a joke. Now this is some side information for the people at home. That music you are hearing is being played by a live band. Yeah. Traditional. Live musicians in the house. We got some rappers here that are gonna perform for us later, I believe. Yes, we will see two Cambodian rappers and one Brazilian rapper later on. Again, international, keeping it very international. I remember, Raphael, when my mother told me that rap music was just a fad and nobody would listen to it. And here we are in Cambodia, getting to see some Cambodian rappers and a Brazilian rapper, because why? My mom was wrong. Yeah. Hey, yo. John, have you heard some of this Cambodian rap? I love it, dude. You know that I like it. I dude, get down with all of it. It yeah. has it has good flow to it. A gun. Yeah. A gun, my friend. Thank you. Now, usually rap doesn't work in certain languages. Of course. Right? Spanish rap, absolutely awful. <laughs> I, I am. Lo I siento, it. my friend. Yo también. Yeah. I speak Spanish and please stop stop rapping Spanish. But Khmer rap, it's got a nice flow. It sounds okay. good. We all love that rhythmic music. Ding, 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 Yeah. All right. Gansberg, Ido Kun Khmer. Again, lovely ring girl letting us know what? That round one is about to start up. Three judges at Gansberg ringside and one referee in control of the action. 
when it gets underway. We go three three-minute rounds, two-minute rounds in between. And this is a friendly matchup between Touch David from Cambodia out of the red corner and, of course, Shah GFC from Malaysia fighting out of the blue corner. Prim, prim, here we go, John. Opening round, 60 kgs, Cambodia taking on Malaysia. Both fighters taking a couple seconds, really slow to come to the center of the ring. First round, here we go. Both fighters high guard. They, both fighters exchanging the stiff jabs. These boys, there is no feeling out process here. Touch David really touching up the Malaysian fighter. Hands being exchanged. Right elbow being thrown by David. Touch is trying to throw everything, bro. I like it. Right now, Touch is uh, enforcing his will, causing his game plan to go into effect. I, I worry a little bit for Shaw because of the way that he backed up right there. Tried to come in with the punches and the bunches, got completely stalemated, and the smile goes on the face of Touch Davis, who's once again not really backing up in order to get away, but backing up in order to cause range and throw those hooks to the body. Davis Tries to shock him off. David's doing really well with the boxing, especially the left hook to the head. Now, and now, by throwing that hook to the body, he's opening up in the elbows, going to the clinch. He's looking very strong here in the clinch, looking for that right elbow. S step in, right elbow. Shaw GFC can't wait. He just can't wait around like that. He gets hit up with the elbow, and then the flying elbow tries to come in, and then the liver pit uh, shot comes into the body again. When he does that, it's a, it, Shah is dropping his elbows right away. If I was the corner of the red corner, I would right away make that known to my fighter. When he goes to the body, you can see the elbows drop. Let's look for that to come into play later because again, if he does that, heads wide open later in the round. Like Shaw. you said, the clinch game coming into full effect here in the very first moments of this round. Shah showing lots of heart here. Still pushing forward, but that body hook is gonna pay dividends for David. That left hook back to the head. David just looking super strong, super stable here in his opening round. Exchange of elbows from both fighters. I love the red corner's upward swinging elbow. He's tried to put it in there and implement it. He's landed it one or two times. I don't think that he's going to stop. When they make a mark, they try again, turns his back. Fighters should never turn their back, because here in Kun Kamir, it is legal to strike to that spine, so you don't want to show it. Shaw now trying to find some offense, trying to use those teams to create space. But David coming in, again with that right hand, and that knee! The body of Shaw is hurt. David not only throwing body hooks, but also throwing heavy knees to the body. He keeps going back to the body, doing well. Shaw trying to use that left kick to create space. David doing really well to step back and counter with his hands. Heavy handed fighter is touch David, the Cambodian fighter. The crowd really getting behind the Cambodian fighter. Cheering him on, they're looking for that first round stoppage. Touch David is not a one trick pony man. He's going everywhere. When the Malaysian comes in with the high kick, he goes to the body. And again, as we come to the end of round one, End of round one. Gansberg, Idol, Kun Kamir. The crowd goes buck wild. They're loving Touch David right now. What I'm loving about Touch David that I just really need to comment on is again how all over the place he's going. It's not just head hunting. You know what I mean? He's just not going for that one elbow like we've seen. Not a one trick pony. Trying to get volume punches and bunches. And moreover, going over his combinations. What I love is again how he's hooking to the body. I said it during the fight, but man. He's getting that elbow on, on Shah to lower. If he lowers it enough, you know what there, that's there, right? You got it up here, boom to the body, boom to the body, boom to the body. Oh. Uh, hey, Target. Night, night. Hey, Target. Hey, look, fresh. And again, I think, it, I, I think it's going to actually really play into the pace of this fight because I think Touch David is able to touch him up. And I'm a man from Malaysia, Shah, GFC. He's really got to take note that that, that arm can't drop so low, you can still protect, but do not leave your jaw open, my friend. Shaw's, Shaw's corner now really trying to wake up their fighter. His teammate there telling Shaw, as Touch David comes in and rips the body, to throw the elbow counter. Shaw, I mean, sorry, Touch David.
just keeps coming forward. And just like you said, he does well changing up levels, and that's what's so important. He is not a one-trick pony. He has all the weapons, all eight weapons. Not only is he ripping to the body, but he's mixing up knees and the elbows and even some kicks there. Of course. Again, Gansberg, Idol, Kun Kamir, the platform, everybody here in Cambodia wants to be in. Around the globe, know that it's happening here as we come to round number two of this three-round bout, Malaysia versus Cambodia. Again, Shah, GFC from Malaysia in the blue corner. Touch David, Cambodia's own in the red. Shaw being able to survive that first round onslaught from Touch David, showing lots of heart. But every time Touch David went to that body, you saw Shaw wins. So let's see in round two if we will see a knockdown or if Shah GFC Malaysia will be able to find some type of counter, create some type of space, create some type of, some type of offense. Can you smell it? Can you smell the stoppage? Can you smell it? Could it happen here in the second round? It could, but we cannot count out Shaw. He is a former Krabby Stadium champion. But now, yeah. That was what I was talking about. You can never do that. You saw him check that. Everybody in this place saw him check that. Even once again, touch David. Like, oh, you're gonna check it? If you're gonna check it, I'm gonna check you, son. Came yeah, John, out with that other elbow. John, he checked it twice. I know. Twice. Man, even if the blood dribbles down into your eye, you do not make your opponent aware that you're feeling the pain. Exactly. Method Man brings the pain. Wu Tang. Round number two, Touch David being pushed back by that referee. Or again, three judges at ringside. And of course, one referee in charge of the action as the fighters. And our now lovely ring girl who shows the numero dos, that's number two in the Spanish language. We're multilingual here. Let's us know round number two is coming in in full effect. Kun Kamir action at its finest here. Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir. All right, John. Prim, prim, prim in Khmer means ready. Prim, and, prim. And here we are. Touch David again coming out super aggressive, trying to land that jab. Stiff jab being landed. And right uppercut being landed. Shaw really just walking forward into a lot of shots. Keeping his chin tucked. Maybe he's going to try to clinch, try to land those knees. Touch David asking him, okay, come on. Let's engage. Touch David stalemated him there, right? So Shaw came in, thrown everything but the kitchen sink at him, right? Referee telling him he can't hook underneath. And again, stalemates again with that teep. Touch David trying to come in. Comes in with a kick again, right to the bread basket. Let's see if he goes down, he does, and he comes back up, and that's what I'm talking about. The different range and the different volume that he comes in. The left side of Shaw, that right side, that right underneath there, is probably a little bit in trouble. Or at least he's feeling it, because they're landing on their mark. Touch is really hunting the body now. He landed a bunch of body hooks and mixing up with the knee to body, but also the low kick, really mixing up levels. Shaw's in danger right now. That low kick's really hurting now. Shaw's really on wobbly legs. Raph, Raph, this is what I love. This is what we're talking about. I mean, again, once he had the body going, now he's coming with the leg. Now that the leg is hurting, he's going up to the head. Touch David putting on a very good uh, clinic here as he grabs the leg again. Shaw needs to do what he was doing at the beginning of this round. Come back and throw everything. Throw heat right now. But you can tell he's a little bit damaged and he's winded, definitely winded from those body blows. Shaw really starting to fold here. His gas tank is not what it used to be and touch just piecing him up really touching up Shaw Shaw trying to find some type of offense trying to use that team create space and time but touch is unrelenting he keeps coming forward mixing up levels with his hands unrelenting and, and unrelenting with where he throws the damage right as he goes in for the clinch and brings up the knee again and then brings the punch and the knee back what great change up in the game plans coming from touch david and that knee may have hit him in the face and touch david now just unloading a little tumble roll from shaw he's trying to catch that low kick because it's hurting that leg 
Touch David really going into his second gear, unloading some heavy artillery in his hands. Shaw kind of just going to the clinch, trying to get a stall, trying to save some time. End of round two. Final seconds of round two. Again, they were very content to range each other out, probably because Touch David has decided that he's going to breathe through that round as he thinks he's going to take it in the eyes of the scorecards of the judges. And I have to agree with him. I mean, that was quite the clinic. I really enjoyed it because, you know, he came in there, Shaw, from the very first moment of round two, started throwing everything. And great, he needed to. But he got stalemated then by Touch David and went in that stalemate. The mind, you saw the cerebral, the, the IQ came out. And now I'm going to throw to the head. And now I'm going to throw to the leg. And now I'm going to throw to the liver. And he touched the whole frame of the map of, of my man from Malaysia. So obviously you can tell who I'm siding with on that yes, round. Are. Two to nil in my favor. Again, I'm not the judge. I'm just the goofy dude in the vest talking smack from the best seats in the house with my man Raph, but 2-0. I have to agree with you, John. 2-0 for sure for Touch David, but we have to give out props to Shaw. Yo. Any other person would have gone down. He almost went down, but he kept coming up. Yep. That's why Mark. Touch David had to change up levels. He kept on going for the legs. He thought, okay, maybe I, I can stop him with the legs, but he couldn't, so he went to the body. Could stop him with the body. Went back up to the head, went back to the body. Shaw is taking a lot of damage, but he's- He's eating it like a buffet, though. You're right. I mean, he's taking it, he's eating it, he's holding it down. I do think that it clearly affected his cardio capabilities. He is breathing out of his mouth uh, pretty heavily right there at the end, and I would say, a lot, a lot of that comes from the grilling up of the ribs, right? That Touch David is doing. Might as well be called Tony Romas over there because he's just going to the ribs all day. And from a man with a broken rib, I can tell you what, man. Uh, you can't sleep, you can't laugh, you can't cough. It sucks. Third and final round about to come up here, but we do need the Gansberg ring girl on cue to come over here and let us know what round it is. I, I'm pretty sure it's number three, but until I see her, Nothing's positive, my friends. Nothing's positive. We need official confirmation, and I that's what we get from the Gansborough girls. I need confirmation. You said it. I smelt it like ribs again. John, so poetic here. So poetic. John, very interesting. If you look over at the blue corner now, his teammate, the other Malaysian fighter who will be fight number six, is actually hands are wrapped and in and helping corner his teammate. Let's look at and as the replays pass, it was all touch David in that second round. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, Raph. So we got teammates in there already wrapped up, showing his love for his boy. And again, as the drone shot goes, you can see that this Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir crowd is absolutely a vast sea of people here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. You should go there. There she is. What up? Oh, confirmation. Confirmation. Round number three. Let's get up and let's get ill, Kun Kamir. Fight fans. It's all happening here at Gansberg. Idol, Kun Kamir. Malaysia in the blue corner. Cambodia in the red corner. Sportsmanship shown. The cornerstone of Kun Kamir is the sportsmanship. Third and final round. Three judges at ringside. If we go the full distance of this three minute, third and final round. Touch David again on the back foot, but he's just going to getting his range as the Malaysian comes in and gets clocked. Dipped under, and no contact had to the face there. Shaw pressuring forward. He knows he's down by two rounds. He's trying to find some type of knockdown, some type of knockout here. He catches that low kick sweep. Go in and say hello to the fans is the young man from Malaysia. Yeah, that got a smile on a lot of people's faces. They're loving him over there in that corner now. Shaw just won some fans from a slip and some good uh, facial gestures as the body kick goes. Touch again, just head, body, legs, everything. 
This kid has all the weapons, but Shaw, maybe. Staying alive like John Travolta, isn't he? Shaw landing sh those short elbows in the clinch. That's what we need to see more of. Shaw, yep. Shaw seeing effective strikes here in the clinch, short elbows. He might need to walk forward and go into the clinch. He just got teeth in the face by Touch David. Yeah, Touch gotta give a little respect here in the third round. He's talking about the, actually that was very respectful of both those fighters right there. Again, Touch David talking about how the canvas is a little wet, made for the slip, opponent didn't just go after him. Goes for that elbow like we said again. Shaw trying to make that over, maybe just a little too little too late to step up the pattern of combinations here in the third round. The Cambodian crowd now getting super excited, to get, getting behind Touch David. But John, you gotta give it up to Shaw, what a heart. Anybody else would have been down already. Those body shots, they seem like this, it doesn't affect him anymore. Yeah. He's an absolute zombie. Touch David locks up the body and brings up the knees first. Again, they do go back and forth as the referee splits them up. We're coming to the end of the third and final round. Touch is being very, well again, touching him up still with the tape. Comes to the bread basket. Shah brings up that left leg. He would really have to put the pedal to the metal right now if he want to, wants to win this in the eyes of the judges. He's got to get the knockout. Otherwise, I feel like this is just going touch David all day as he still works that lower leg here in the third and final round. Shaw trying to find something, getting his legs chopped by touch. Touch really in a, in a driver's seat this entire fight. And John, that ring is super slippery, super wet. Beautiful left hook from Touch David. He's been countering that all night. Every single time he comes in, he's countering with that left hook. The right hand again, Shaw. How is Shaw standing? John, how did Shaw stand for those three rounds? I know. Kudos to him, right? All the respect in the world. I could see it in Raf's eyes. He's loving the guy, you know. He might not be able to take it in the uh, judges' scorecards, but Shaw has taken it in the hearts of some of the Cambodian fans. Clearly, they loved him over there. And yeah, my man could eat. Right? Give him a buffet of violence and he'll take it. So kudos to Shah, Malaysian, Nagata cool zone. Gotta have some fans that stand up for my man from Malaysia. John, even though I, I, I think that we can agree that Touch David won that fight very easily, I, Shaw has won me over as a fan. I would love to see Shaw GFC Malaysia come back and fight on Gansberg. That's, that's the thing about this Gansberg Idol Kum Khmer fight, you know. We're kind of like the Japanese in the old days, right? You know, you can, you can, you might not win, but right. you will win the hearts. If you come in here, put on a face, show your bravery, show your full medal, show what you got. You can, you can win character, right? You can, you can win the hearts of guys like you, me, and again, all the Cambodian fans that were over there. They were loving him. So, we will go to the judges' scorecards and my Cambodian Buffer Brothers, the MCs with the most. You'll see what happens. I think it's Touch David, but Shaw, kudos to you too, man. John, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if after the decision, as Shaw David's exited, he gets a big applause from the Cambodian crowd. I think Cambodian crowd really happy to see such heart, such grit, such determination. Yeah, that is heart and guts right there. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Touch David, your winner of this second bout on the Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer, April 7, 2024 card against Malaysian's own Shah GFC. Again, no slouch, no slouch. Shah can leave here head up, head held high. He, and he does, he has a smile on his face over there in the corner. He's still checking for the blood off that, that elbow to the forehead, which I would just tell him, please don't do that again. <laughs> Just like you said, no slouch at all is Shaw. Well, well done. Lots of hard grit. And now the trophy being presented to our winner, Touch David, the Cambodian fighter. Brewmasters in the ring. Thank you, that man.
Both these fighters get in a little bonus fight money envelope. Well deserved. How John have you how, just like you said the whole the entire night, it takes two to two to tango. It does. And you love to see that. Both fighters, not not just one fighter, both fighters getting a bonus. Oh, of course, man. Again, shot. Put it all on the line right there. You got it done. You really got it done. Look at that crowd, John. And wow. The Shot crowd having some fun, yeah. He really is. Winning those hearts again, man. That's I, a good that we should get back over here to Cambodia very soon. I, I would love to see him come back. I would love to see him come back. And John! An HD TV. That's like a 40 inch. John. Our idols just keep on giving away motorcycles, TVs, maybe a blender. I know. Who knows? It's but prize fighting. You're supposed to fight for the prizes. But wait, at a Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir show? No, 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 no. You can you can be a champion. Anybody here. Anybody here could be a winner. Go home with cups, go home with microwaves, washer and dryer. I mean, this is basically the price is right. Because the price is fight. Gans, we're bringing out prize fighters and also prize fans. Oh, for sure, man. Such a beautiful atmosphere here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I, it's, it's tough to describe, again, as a guy that didn't grow up here, even on this side of the planet. They, they got the number out there, right there. So as you can see, we got raffles on raffles, magical prizes to give away. And again, the atmosphere here, these, these Cambodian fans really come out here for this Gansberg. Uh, couldn't come here idol show and I will tell you what couldn't, couldn't be more happy that they do they just make it such a fun time John what's really interesting is the demographic of the fans here it's a family it's, affair it's a family affair it's people of all ages kids grandmothers grand grandfathers dads moms brothers sisters right it's the entire family as opposed to back home yeah of course back home in America the demographic of people who watch fights usually people who train in the sport Fighters but here, and, yep. everyone loves to see Kung Kamer. Everyone yeah. gets behind the Cambodian fighters, She's and it's amazing. Right there. right there. Yeah, exactly. The beautiful people of Cambodia in the mix, making this such a fun show. Again, Gansberg, Idol Kung Kamer, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. You should go there. Third bout of the evening is about to be underway. Again, another friendly bout. I like how we do that. It's like soccer fans, right? Football fans, whatever. I don't know. I don't watch that sport. But I will tell you they have friendly sometimes. And this friendly is coming up and it, it will pit fighters from Cambodia against a fighter from Algeria. Uh, always an international ev uh, event, but we do regularly see a fighter here from um, one of the multiple countries that I don't ever go to, Algeria. I've never been there, not saying that I won't, because you know me, I'm a world traveler, I want to go there, but it's always nice to find fighters from Algeria, from Uganda, from Namibia, right? We've had some weird, some great countries on board with this. And to know and see these guys train. Uh, at the last uh, Idol Kun Khmer, we had guys from France that train out of a Kun Khmer Dream in Paris. Yes. If that doesn't show you the international growth of the sport, I don't know what does. But again, seeing a guy from Algeria who trains in a Kun Khmer Dream come here to the land of Kun Khmer to try to test his medal against the fighters who have been in it since since birth. 
But John, this Algerian fighter is no slouch. He's been training Kankamer for 15 years. He currently resides in Phuket. Your home. Oh yeah, Pearl of the Animan. He trains at Gao Sip Sam Gym. Okay. In Phuket, and he's a clinch fighter. By the way, so he's kind of keeping it real, right? So he's he's not going to the one of the ma ma major gyms. He's going going to one of the smaller gyms. Probably gets a little bit more attention there from the coaches. But yeah, it's wonderful to see again. A little bit older man, 36 years young, is Giannis coming from Algeria against a 25 years young Cambodian fighter who we have seen before, Nai Vipa. Should be some fantastic action, as it always is. Make sure you give a like and subscribe again to all things Bayon TV, Gansberg, Idol Kung Kamir. Give it a like, give it a share. Go become friends with Raf. He likes the social media. Big fan of the social media. Me. Bro, me social media. Look yeah. at you, Mister. I'm, I'm like Mr. illiterate. Social media. I'm illiterate. No, Mister, you are social <laughs> media famous. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, this fight should be very, very interesting because the Julian fighter Janice is a clinch fighter, so he's gonna come forward and look for the clinch. He's gonna look for those knees and elbows. But Nai, the Cambodian fighter, of course, heavy-handed. So we're gonna see a forward fighter coming forward while. The Cambodian fighter is going to try to land his punches and stay away from the clinch. Styles makes fights, and this should be a barn burner. Yeah. Great way to pitch that right there. That was a, that was a wonderful phrase. Again, Raphael growing every day as a fighter and a commentator. I, again, I can't wait to see you on Bayon TV in the future. Fighting for the pride of the USA. I guess, right? Kind of. Right? Yeah, of course. Put in, put in American fighters here on the map. Professional Kunkumer fighters, of course. Correct. Let's go. The Algerian flag up on the LED screen, as you can tell, the masses are here to support this one. Third bout of the evening, friendly matchup. Algeria versus Cambodia, and our fighter, who will be out of the blue corner from Algeria, Yanis Mazuni. 36 years young, 178 cm standing, 65 kg walking weight. Probably not, right? Probably up there around 72 and cut. What do you think? I think probably cut about seven, eight, eight kilos. To the foreign fighters usually cut a lot of weight, especially because yeah. these are day before weigh-ins. 69 fights to his accreditation with 51 wins, 17 losses, one draw, and of course, 15 KOs. As his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, stands in front of the, those Gansberg bikes. Everybody's a champion when you're on a Gansberg bike. My man, 178 CM standing, 65 was the way in but again i'm saying that he's walking weight around 73 74. 11 fights 10 wins one loss is zero draws how many knockouts does he have out of those 10. all 10. all 10 oh. via knockout Oof. 25 years young and again a chiseled jawline for our man from cambodia not as experienced in life or in the ring is the Cambodian fighter. But I'm but telling you what, he's got some of the uh, fans, fans here. John, 10, 10 wins all coming by KO. This kid has power in his hands. Yeah. This guy has a lot of power in his hands, and it's gonna be a very interesting fight. Like I said, it's a forward knee, knee and clinch fighter versus a punch, a, a punch fighter, right? It's going to be a super interesting fight. Both fighters, same height. So usually when the clinch fighter or the knee fighter is a little taller, it makes the job a little easier. But this time, both fighters, same height. And you love to see how look at that. The Cambodian fighter asked him to put the gloves, slapping them, telling them, these hands are coming for you. 
I love it. You are correct. Again, that is the thing about this Idol Kukumir fight that I do really like. They come out taped up, as you just saw, but the gloves are put on right in here before the Kun crew goes. And yeah, that Cambodian fight is just bashing his gloves over there, raising it up. The audience is getting into it. And of course, my man from Algeria over here, Giannis, is taking note. John, how lucky are we get to watch these fights live here in Phnom Penh? The golden age of Kun Khmer. You need to trademark. You need to trademark that. That's so good right there. The golden age of Kun Khmer. We have stepped into a new mother loving era. And it is Kun Khmer. But John, think about it. Yeah. Five shows every weekend. Five shows every weekend. Every weekend. Twenty shows a month. Absolutely mind-boggling. These boys, whether it's three rounds or five rounds, they fight from the first round. Oh, for sure. Pure action. Yeah, for sure. Again, my man from C Cambodia just got in the chair. Nye over there. Smile across his face. Again, he is the more inexperienced fighter with only 11 fights to his accreditation. But out of those 11, 10 fights, 10 wins, 10 KOs. Whoa, what a great time that is. Let's let's hope that we get that too. Uh, some KO action. You know, right now we've had two go two go the distance. Normally, that, I mean that's what I said at the beginning of this. I hope no more of these go the distance. We need some fights to end. John, but how rare is that? So rare. It's so rare for these fights to go the distance because these boys are banging. No, it's it's like bad steak. It's too rare. Too rare. Bloody. I want it. The sea of Veeble is again ebbing and flowing constantly here at Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer as we get the tail of the tape. And you can see Nye on the red corner, blue corner, Giannis, Algeria versus Cambodia. Very exciting matchup, pitting more experience, an older 36-year-old fighter from Algeria against the younger Cambodian. But I am telling you what, Obviously, dynamite in those gloves. Grenades have been thrown and landed on chins at points because 10 fights, 10 KOs. It's just, it's fun to see. Goes over, Algerian fighter in his opponent's corner right there, the red corner, as the Kun crew goes. Both of them getting a little limbered up. Both fighters performing the Kun crew, as John said before, showing respect to their families, their coaches, their gym, and of course to the beautiful sport of Kun Khmer. Again, both fighters will end up their Kun crew. We will bring out the Gansberg round card girl who, who will signify the start of this absolutely epic battle that we're going to have on our hands right here three three minute rounds of gansberg idol kun Khmer with two minutes in between rounds again three judges at ringside and one referee in control of the action Beautiful Kun Crew being performed by Nye. The crowd really loving it. Getting behind their Cambodian warrior. Seconds away from some action right now, John. Another shout out to Freshy, Gansberg, Boost Strong, and of course, Idol. Photos, they even captured us here. Uh -huh. All those 
watching around the globe, make sure you go like and subscribe to all things Bay on TV, Gansberg and Idol Kung Kamir. Grow the game and support the sport that we so dearly love, the national combat sport of Cambodia, Kung Kamir. Come here. A night of many firsts, we will say that again as we go. This is our third friendly matchup of the evening. Third bout of the night, Cambodia versus Algeria. Again, we will go with another friendly, Cambodia versus Myanmar, and then we're on to three ISKA title fights. Heck of a night here in PP Cambodia as the Gansberg girl shows us what round we are stepping into. And it's her round. It's her round all day. Round numero uno, that Spanish for number one. International here at Gansberg Idol Kung Kamir. Prim, prim. Ready, ready, steady. Go. All right, John, here we go. Very interesting fight. Yanis in the blue, Nye in the red. Nye, the southpaw starting off that left kick. Both fighters, same height. Yanis on the back foot, surprising me. Left hand lands for Nye. Nye doing well with that left kick. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. What happened there? Is it a slip? It was a check. He might have. He might have he cracked might have, the shin. It I might have been he, a knee. Yeah. He might have kicked the inside, the yep. inside of the knee. Yeah. There is clearly a leg problem. The leg is visually giving him some pain right now. Oh, uh, John, you hate to see this. Let's look at the replay. So he goes. So he checks there. He lands. He goes for the inside kick. Ah. Oh, so as he went for the for the rear leg kick, Nye was able to check, and it seems that the knee connected with the shin. Oh, he can't put any pressure on it. He's over there in his corner. The win will go to the man from Cambodia, Nye Vyapra. I don't know if he necessarily wants that 11th win that way. I think that he wanted to land the heavy hands. It's always tough on a fighter to win via a check of a kick. But you can see, we can see, as they show the Gansberg replay right there, he can't put any pressure on that. They are going to have to bring people for him to use as crutches to get out of the Gansberg ring. Doctors and medical staff are on hand. Again, the best of the best only here at Gansberg Idol Fight. Idol Kung Kamir putting it on another level. We can see the judges and the referees are prepared and ready to raise the hand of the victor inside the Gansberg ring, but they are being very proper in what they are doing with my man from Algeria again. Got to give him a salute and a three cheers. It is not a great way to lose. It is not a great way to win. It's kind of icky on both sides, but yes, visually kind of stunning for us. Yeah. There he is again, Nye, getting his hand raised. John, and that's why you need to condition those shins. Yeah. That is something that foreign fighters do not understand. Shin conditioning is of utmost importance. The stronger your shins are, the harder you can kick. The more you can kick, the stronger you are. And they are having to help him out outside of the ring. You can see behind our Cambodian host with the most. They are getting Giannis out. Wow. Ni Wirapa is your winner of this third bout and friendly between Algeria and Cambodia. As my man from Algeria does have to get carried off, crutched off that right leg, not giving any support to him. John, you hate to see that happen to oh. fighters. You absolutely hate it. Like, like, you so, like you said so well before, both fighters, of course, horrible way to, horrible way to win, horrible way to lose as well. No, again, uh, the guy who's the champ in there, you know, to be the man, you got to beat the man. But sometimes you don't want to beat the man via a check of a leg kick. Again, I would feel horrible if, uh, like, the shin breaks off, you know, the old Chris Weidman, Anderson Silva, if you will, or Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman, because it happened to both of them, right? Exactly, exactly. And 
if we do look at it in that manner, right? Thankfully, he didn't break his shin. No. He probably might have a small hairline fracture or a small fracture, and he'll be back in. Well, we, we didn't see that compound is what you're talking about. Yeah. And nor do we need to. We wish. Not being held high by an eye. And again, he will move on to a 12-fight record with now 11 wins. 10 knockouts and one knockout via checking a leg kick. Are we calling that a knockout? I think, I think technically, technically we have to. Gets to go home happy, I'll tell you that much. Again, the Cambodian fans really letting him hear it as he walks up the Gansberg ramp. And on to the next fourth bout of the evening. And again, it is pitting another friendly matchup between Cambodia and Myanmar in the 60 kg weight category. Again, our guys from Myanmar, we've had a lot of them here at the uh, Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer shows. Very good at their national sport, the Letwe coming into play sometimes, but we do remove that. Art of nine, remember this is the art of eight, my friends. Not the art of nine, art of eight. Kun Kamir, again from the walls of CM Reap's own Angkor Wat on the Cambodian flag. It's one of the oldest martial arts in the universe. And it is Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir. As Raf said, the golden age of Kun Kamir is here, my friends. And we go to another raffle because everyone at one of these shows is in fact a winner. John, can can we get a Samsung TV too? I think we all deserve Samsung TVs. I don't know if you have to pop the top of one of the Bruce Strongs because if you do drink Bruce Strong, they will let you know. You pop the top, can't stop, and you can win prizes. Right? That's the cool thing. This isn't this isn't Boston back in the 80s with a Monopoly. You know, McDonald's, McDonald's Monopoly, Monopoly yes. stickers game. Yes. It ain't that. It, they've, they've taken it to the next level. They've kept it alive. Boost Strong, Freshy, Gansberg, all pop tops, literally. Freshy's got it. Gansberg, like the 80s, right? Loving it. Why? Premier German brewery. And you can see right there on the Gansberg tag, they got the numbers. If, if you're out there, 12, 57, 75, 77, you may be the winner of a new television, a new motorbike. Who knows what you're going to win? But I know I know something. You're going home a winner. John, everyone here goes home a winner because they get to see high-level conquer fighters bang it out for three rounds nonstop action. I know. I know. It makes everybody happy. It brings smiles to faces. Peace on earth through combat sports. Why, why fight in the world? Why fight in like wars? You know, when you can get in there, into the Gansberg Adel Kun Khmer ring and go to a literal three, three minute battle. Just to, just to test your full metal, your character as a fighter. And again, for fighters around the globe who are tra training Kun Khmer, why wouldn't you want to come to the motherland? John. We have to give a big shout out to all the foreign fighters coming down to Phnom Penh and competing on the, on the Gansberg show. Not only this show, but on all the shows that Bayon has. These fighters are willing to put their reputation on, their, on the line from their home countries and come here and compete with the best in the world. Yes. These fighters and right now, these customer fighters, are the best fighters around. I'm with you, brother. And, and again, on another historical night, we go to our fourth friendly, Cambodia versus Myanmar. But on a historical night, ISKA title fights, three of them. 65 kg, 57 kg, and 75 kg ISKA titles on the line. That we'll also see, by the way, uh, when we go into the golden age of Kun Khmer. Tommy Hayden will be the first ever foreign referee of an ISKA belt on the line, Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer matchup. That's growth. That's international growth. John, it's a night of first. Yeah. ISKA, three ISKA belts on the line, the first time ever here in Cambodia. 
And of course, our friend Tommy Hayden, first foreign referee to ref a Khan Khmer fight in Cambodia. Now again, with our main event, with our main event, everybody here being so excited for Tiago, AKA Sen, right? You've been training with him at the gym. First fight in how long? 10 months. 10 months on the sideline. 10, Ten months, months on the sideline. You know, he's a uh, Cambodian son, a, an adopted treasure here. Again, I had to say, we've been out with him. The streets love him, right? The ladies on the streets come over, and they are taking selfies galore with him. John, trying to go out with Tiago is absolutely impossible. We try to go to a supermarket. Just quick supermarket, five, five minute run. Took us two hours just from the amount of people coming up to him to take pictures or just to say hello, how are you? We wish you luck on this fight. He's like a Beatle. He's like a Korean boy band member here, right? And he's also a Cambodian citizen. What's that? He's a Cambodian citizen. Yeah, he has a Cambodian passport. I know. The people kudos are really taking him in. Yeah, kudos to him for really doing it. And that's what's so beautiful about the Cambodian people. Tiago being a Brazilian, completely opposite side of the world, but yet they still love him, embrace him. They brought him in. They treat him as one as one of their own. It's beautiful to see. Yeah. It really is. Again, fantastic country. I definitely think people from around the globe, if you study martial arts, this needs to be put on the map as one of the places to come. Go to Siam Reap. Go to Angkor Wat. You can see it painted there. Thousands and thousands and thousands of history, historical, just greatness, right? I mean, it's a wonder of the world. It's a wonder of the world. I don't really see, need to see anything more. Uh, the referees and the judges are standing and we, they will get their flowers as well. They're Miley Cyrus flowers. Credit. Kudos. Aces to you. You're the man. You're the myth. And of course, there's the legend. All our team here at Gansberg Idol Kung Kamir. Past, present, and future John, of the Golden Age. Uh, John, like I say, our referees are pretty well dressed tonight. Oh yeah. L I'm loving, I'm loving all the weight. Smooth as eggs. Clean, clean lines. Nice contrast to the to the orange and red of the Gansberg ring. Overall, John, every time we come here, the production level keeps Gross. going up and up and up. I don't know how much higher can it go? Ah, the universe, the stars, the moon, they can all align. That's how high it can go. Let's get universal. I want to see Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir April 2027 live from Mars. That's what I want. That's the sky's the limit. Let's not only take Kun Kamir internationally. Let's take it intergalactic. Right. Intergalactic. We could go to Dubai. We could go to New York. Or we could go to Neptune, player. I think we should. Let's get it international. As we do have on the Gainsbourg LED screens right there. Ye. Yin. My man from yeah, Myanmar. Yin yeah, Yin Nong. Again, 20 years young, 167 CM standing, 60 kg weighing in, 50 fights to his accreditation, 38 wins, 12 losses, zero draws, nine of those wins are via KO. My man from Myanmar, the yellow, green, and red with the star. I'm telling you, love my man from Myanmar. Mangalaba. Mangalaba to all my Myanmar Burmese fans watching around the globe on Bayon TV. Hit the like and subscribe button to all things social media for Gansberg Idol Kung Kamir fight. Mangalaba. Jizuba. That guy knows. That guy knows. <laughs> John Nutt, an international man, yeah. knows many languages. Mr. I didn't know that you that you spoke Burmese. Oh, yeah. Too. Ajaja Bao. It means oh. make some noise in Burmese. What? I know. Or Gordon, thank you. There you go. And come here. Or Gordon. And walking out into the ring, the Cambodian fighter, Sun Kun Khmer. Sun Kun Khmer, yeah. 25 years young for this man, 165 CM standing. Weight on the dot at 60 kg. He's got 100, 
101 fights, so he, this man is a centurion. He's got the century under his under his belt. 83 wins, 14 losses, four draws, 45 of those wins via the old knockout power. I am absolutely loving Sun Kun Kamara's record here. 101 fights, stunt 101. Man, it's it's fantastic. And again, as an international show, you know, maybe you don't like what uh, me and Raf are saying all the time, but at least you're learning something. You know, you can go home and say, hey, you know what? I learned how to say uh, thank you in Khmer. Akon. 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 And of course, you can learn how to say thank you in Burmese. Chizuba. Right? And thank you in Spanish. Gracias. Gracias. De nada, my friends. International event again. Gansberg, Idol Kun Kamir. Maybe you don't like us on the mic, but like the Snapple cap of combat sports. Pop the top. Oh, I did learn something. That's amazing. I'm now smarter for watching Gansberg, Idol Kun Kamir. Two birds, one stone. Magic. Not only do we bring you entertainment, but we also educate you. And that's why the kids are here. Correct. Bring your kids, bring your wife, bring your grandma, bring your grandpa, bring the whole family down to Phnom Penh. Come on down, come and see John and I here. But, nah, nah, nah. Come and watch all these Cam Cam Cambodian superstars. The golden age of Kung Khmer is now. You should be here. That you should. This is our fourth bout of the evening. Seven bouts on the card. Son Kun Khmer fighting out of the red corner. John, that man in the blue corner, hardest working man tonight. This is the third fight he's cornering. Yeah, again, he's just going back and trading vests, isn't he? <laughs> he really is. He, at this point, he might as well just stay out here and corner every fight in the blue corner. Correct. Yeah, you know. Our Burmese battler, the man from Myanmar, will be fighting out of the blue corner. Our MCs on the other degrees are heading out of the Gansberg ring as, as the music starts up and the dance starts happening. Let's show some respect to the past, present, and future of Kun Khmer. Not only to the gyms, not only to their training partners, but again, the ancestry, the history, the culture of the combat sport that is Kun Khmer. And John, just like you've been saying the entire night, Kun Khmer is etched at Angkor Wat. Yeah. I mean, again, doesn't get, doesn't get more world historical site than that, right? That is a UNICEF, I think. I mean, it is a world wonder. Yes, it so. is. World wonder. And Kun Khmer again, another world wonder. Yeah. Ancient martial arts being performed for centuries. Correct. And now we get to see it live here on Bayon TV. Kun Khmer, Gansberg, idol fight. Yeah, with, with artists. Monet, right? Used a canvas. Beethoven played an instrument. Sun Kun Khmer. He's a different type of artist, my friend. Different type of artist. But just like the man paints on the canvas, this man will paint on a canvas too, hopefully in blood. And John, look at that. Look at how humble Sun Kun Khmer is. Coming out to me, his opponent, gloves under. Oh yeah. Showing evenness, showing respect. You will see some other fighters try to go gloves over to show mm. dominance. But Sun Kun Khmer, 101 fights still. Humble, beautiful to see. Doesn't need to show his dominance in touching of the gloves. He needs to show his dominance inside the ring during this. Three, three minute rounds 
of Gansberg Idol Kunkamir action here on the 7th of April, 2024. The bell sounds. Round one gets underway. Prim, prim, ready, ready. Sun getting a quick sip of water. Seconds away from starting this first round. Sun Kunkamir in the red. Ye Yinan in the blue. Ye the southpaw. Trying to start with that left body kick. Sun already starting with the right elbow. Both these fighters, same height, even built. Beautiful left teep to the face by Sun. Yi being smart here, using his right hand to find his range and then using his left side weapons as mainly that left body kick. That's gonna pay off dividends if he keeps landing it. Sun just feeling out his Malaysian opponent. Still warming up, still trying to feel it out. Throws a right kick, partially checked by Yi. Yeah, both of these fighters are staying calm and collective here in the early round, or early of the first round, early minutes. I will say that the, my man from Myanmar, you can see the focus on his eyes, staring very well into the chest, not making eye contact with his opponent, trying to see where the swivel, the shimmy, and that shake comes in for the shoulder movement and the movement of the hips. Again, both stalemating each other as the leg comes up again. It does get blocked. And a nice shot there from our man from Cambodia. That low kick from Sun, even though it's checked by Yi, it broke his balance. Sun has some hard shins. Sun now starts to attack with his right kicks. Yi, again, left, left side weapons, left kick, left cross, left inside kick. Trying for a left elbow, not standing up and missing. Sun trying to close in that distance, trying to find the low kick. Lead him back from the head kick of Sun. Sorry, of Yi. Yi, very smart right now. He's on the back foot. He's using that right hand not only to touch and find range, but to jab. Big right kick, big left kick from both fighters. Oh. Does go down to the canvas as my man from Myanmar hits his back. And again, they're back at it. Almost center stage on the Gansberg canvas, which is a little slippery this evening, I will tell you what. Popping those hands out again, southpaw against orthodox. Stalemating each other with that left hand out from Sun. Brings him back into his own red corner as the leg comes up. That left kick from Yi is super heavy, but beautiful step in left elbow from Sun. Yeah. Sun now closing the distance. Sun now waking up. Closing distance, closing range. Yi, again on the back foot, try, trying to time that heavy left kick. Very confident round for both fighters. I mean, again, they're trying to implement their game plans. It's not very much happening as we come to the end of round one. Great first round, very much a stalemate. Hate to be a judge on that round. That that round is going to be so hard to judge. Yi doing really well, throwing heavy left body kicks. But Sun, every time he, he got hit with that left body kick, he countered with the inside with the inside leg. Sun also landed a huge right elbow. Sorry, huge left elbow. Very sneaky. Very sneaky. Yi did not expect that at all. It's it actually put, it, it, it put a little bit of a shock and a little bit of a fear. And my man from Myanmar, Yi Yin Nung. You could see where his it, it, he was going when he caught that little elbow. Very quick, very, I mean, I mean, it was suspicious, right? You couldn't even see it was there. It was, you and I both looked at each other. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a very short elbow because Yi kept on leading with his right hand to touch, touch, touch. So Sun, seeing this, caught, caught that touch. Dropped it down and went right over it. Yeah. Short left elbow. Beautiful to see. As the music picks up here, Cambodia again, such a fun place, such a wild night out. If you ever get to make it down here, make sure you get over to Pasek, right? Pasek Lane. Lane. What a great time we've had these last couple nights here. And can't wait to just finish it off with the main event tonight, Tiago. In there, the new 
newly renamed, if you will, Sen. But before that, we do have more action in this friendly, the fourth bout of the evening. Myanmar in the blue corner, Cambodia in the red corner. Both of these fighters put it all on the line in round one. One of them needs to step away with the game plan, though. One of them needs to put it, implement my plan. I'm going to force you to do it. I'm going to take you out of your mind space. And that's how I'm going to get the W because, again, that was a very 50-50 round. I would hate to be a judge on that last round. Absolutely, John. Very 50-50 round. In this second round, what we just see from Sun, Sun needs to start opening up, closing the distance, not allowing Yi to get any range. Now, what Yi needs to do is the complete opposite. He needs to create that range. Now, he's already been landed that left body kick, but he needs to start changing up. Left body kick, left heap, left hand. And come with the volumes of the combination, right? If you're going to throw that leg, come with those two hands, too. And again, I just want to see if that tight little sneaky elbow can come in. As we go to the Gansberg replay, you saw the foot to face. Let's see if we can get that, uh, that elbow in there. Nice overhand left there, but we are back with more action here at Gansberg, Idol Kunkamir. Right there, there's the man, the myth, the legend, the brewmaster. I see you, brother. With all the VIPs here in attendance, a little, little heart being shown there by our oh, yeah, foreign VIP. You saw James. I saw James. I saw James too. I see you, James. Boss man. Big bombs. And John, the ring girl's getting a better reaction than most of the fighters here tonight. I know. I know. The crowd loves them. Why wouldn't they? You know. That Gansberg outfit, it, it just, it really is attractive, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, John. Makes me, reminds me of a Gansberg beer, which I would love to have right now, but we are working. We are back in the action, though. Round number two, again, Yi Yin in the blue corner. Sun Kung Khmer in the red. Big head kick comes up there. And you can see how much water is there in the blue corner. They gotta take him out of that. Good stabbing elbow there. Tries to come over with it. Both these guys have decided they're gonna put it back on the line with the elbows. Very frantic here. Look at that other one. Sun Sun doing really well in his opening round. He's he's he's, he's making it dirty. He's coming in forward, making his fight a brawl. And that's what you wanna do against a fighter who's technical like Yi. He got kicked in the uh, the old low blow, if you will. They are rearranging his cup. I think that was kind of a shock, actually, for Yi. So they're going to play the elbow game. You can see as they tort, tilt those elbows up, goes in for the knee, completely misses, almost kills a cameraman, I think. That was, I was, that was great awesome. from Sun. Big elbow misses for Yi into the clinch. They go. Sneaky right elbow from Sun. And Sun really just coming in with the elbows now. Uh, hand control from both fighters, trying to find a dominant position. Right, they're both battling for that hand control, but you can see again, Sun keeps on turning his elbow over, which means he wants to step in with it. Another low blow and a third one, he's saying, but I don't know if that one, didn't that look like, it's very close. Very close, either way, referee letting the blue corner know. It does get slippery here. Let's look at the replay. And back to the fight we are. Sun pressing forward. Yi now switching to orthodox stance. He's feeling the pressure of Sun. Sun coming in with a high knee to the face. Right elbow from Sun into the clinch. They go. Yi doing well to tie up his opponent. You know, sometimes when you get those low blows, they can take you out of the uh, game. But also, oh, he got another push. He, he got, that was clear. Sun complaining of the low blow. Yi saying that's on the belt line. We go back to the action. Like I said, when you get those low blows, sometimes they can take you totally out of your headspace. But sometimes they just enrage you. As he is on the canvas, blue corner on the canvas. Yi Yin Nung, Myanmar zone. Still going for that teep. Saying to bring it on as he slaps his own head. 
And there's the, uh, there's the stabbing elbows coming from Sun. The crowd absolutely erupting every time that Sun strikes. Yi here, he just held onto the ropes. He might be tired. And how could you not? The forward pressure of Sun is unrelenting. End of round two. Wow, what a round that was. Fun times from the uh, flying knee into the corner that almost took out one of our cameramen to again the low blows that, that definitely impacts the story of this fight again Yi coming over with those elbows trying to get in there and Sun again not very happy with all of the uh, cup checks if you will the old cup check John if we look into the corners as soon as it got into the corners Yi absolutely collapsed into the corner while Sun was up and happy and, and ready to go again. This third round's gonna be crucial. We might see Yi a little bit gassed, which will allow Sun to try to land some more of those vicious elbows that he's been trying to land since round one. Who do you think actually landed the most volume in that round? I mean, because again, like because of those low say, blows, man. a lot of stalemate shots, right? A lot of elbows that didn't land. A lot of low kicks that did get checked. You know, again, I think it was a very fun round, but this is a real tough, tough matchup to judge. And luckily With we those have two rounds. Yes, very, very hard two rounds to judge because they're so back and forth. Both fighters having moments of brilliance in both those rounds. But that's why we're commentators and that's why we have our friend Tommy Hayden here. Oh yeah, and, and all the rest of the referees here at this wonderful Gansberg Idol Kung Kamir event again it, if we go to the judges scorecards we will be going to those guys and not me and Raph. orange jackets all around as gansberg puts the lights up here and again the crowd the sea of people absolutely just ebbs and flows fourth bout in this friendly again 60 kgs yi yin nung from myanmar fighting out of the blue corner what are, you, what are you seeing, the dance moves? Sun, Sun just got up, he started dancing, he's looking at the crowd. I think this third round, Sun is really gonna try to turn it up here for his home, for his hometown fans. One of these guys is gonna have to steal it in the eyes of the judges if we go the full three, right? The only way you're gonna be able to do that, punches and bunches, volume. I think we're gonna, we're, we're gonna see Sun come in, try to hand control, he's gonna step in with elbows. And let's look at the replay here. The Gansberg replay on the screen as that stabbing elbow, and that's what I was talking about, yeah. He threw two elbows, but it didn't actually land. The other liver shot doesn't necessarily connect on its target, doesn't have a huge impact, and I don't think that the judges will even score those. Look at that crowd, John. Oh, yeah. Such a good time here in Cambodia, Phnom Penh. Why wouldn't you go there? People of all ages, excited yep. to see Kun Khmer. Checking his cup again is the red corner. Well, I saw two that hit, but I saw two that I don't feel like actually went that low. Yes. So, I mean, again, we can all... I'm not him, though, you know what I mean? I'm not feeling it. Exactly, exactly. But of course, it might be technique, right? Yep. You tell, you tell your opponent, hey, pick it up. They might want to not throw that teep anymore. Sure, sure. Last round, Sun Kun Kamara versus Yi Yin Nun. Cambodia taking on Myanmar. Third and final round, respect shown, but now we come out swinging. That didn't actually land. I don't think that was a knockdown. It was a slip. Still looking at the floor. Goes for it again. Sun really pressuring forward, going to the clinch. Good cross face and beautiful sweep. Breaking the balance and posture of Yi Yin. Yi again with that T pressuring forward. The ref there warning Yi to pick it up. Great focus on the face of Sun. He comes in trying to stab his foot directly through the torso of his opponent. Unfortunately, they are on the slippery part of that canvas. Anywhere in the corners of the neutral are gonna be like ice right now. 
Looking forward to seeing the later fights have, having to deal with this. And again, tries to get in that combination. Wrapped up with a knee. Sun is doing really well working through his ranges. Just like he is coming in with that elbow deep into a knee. Again, working from long range, middle range to close range. But now Yi coming back in. Very back and forth action. That corner is super slippery. I don't know why oh, Yi's yeah. back in that corner. It's like he's on ice as he goes to the body, goes to the head. Blue glove lands on chin right there. Great chin to be had from Sun oh. as a knee strikes the stomach. And my man from Myanmar hits the canvas. That may be all she wrote. Oh, he's getting up. He's, he's getting up. Get up. He's gonna get up. I don't think he's getting up. Oh, he's up. not getting up. No, he is oh. not. And that is all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner via a vicious knee to the sternum, Sun Kun Kamir is up on his feet. Let's see it again. Booyakasha. Wow. Right down. under that floating rib on the right side for him. Let's see it again. Boom. He caught it, man. And John. we get, get it again, boom. Referee a little in there. That was absolute perfect placement. That third round, again, was 50-50 until that knee landed. Oh yeah, Raph. Uh, you said it, I mean, we got the replay again there. Right underneath that floating rib, I know I have a broken rib right now. It is the worst thing in the world. Can't cough, you can't laugh. Again, Raph giving the round of applause. The fans went nuts for Sun Kun Kamir, who took to the ropes, obviously won himself some fan favorites right now. Yes, he did. And again, another vicious knockout win for Sun Kun Kamir, who improves his record to 84 wins. John, that was a fight, man. That was a crazy fun, fight. That was super fun. Kun Kamur at its best. Good to see Yi Yintung on his feet in the blue corner. But he will not be joined in having his hand raised by Sun Kun Kamir, your winner of that fourth friendly bout of the evening, Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir, April 7, 2024, live with English commentary by myself, John Nutt, and Raphael on the old ones and twos. Make sure, once again, as the brewmaster of Gansberg steps into the ring, go give a like and a subscribe to all things Bayon TV and all things Gberg. Gansberg, the premier German beer of Cambodia. Yeah, that was a fun fight. Oh, wow. Yeah, lots of fun. And again, it landed on the place, man. You were talking about it. We were discussing when it would happen. And luckily, there it was, landing on its mark. I mean, did you see his face when he was getting counted on those last eight, nine? What are you talking about, ref? What are you talking yeah. about? Dude just went through my entire torso with his knee. <laughs> John, I actually thought he was going to get up. He made eye contact with the ref, and he tried to get up, and then just said, no, 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 this is too much. But right up to that moment, 50-50, it would have been a nightmare to score that fight. A little interview time for my man's son. Get a little love from and the, he uh, has again. It. The masters of ceremony right there. Yeah, Von Viva. He's uh, discussing Von Viva. He used to fight for me. 
Just by the way, he fought in the Full Metal Dojo. He had an MMA fight. No, they were discussing uh, Vorn Viva, former champion here in Cambodia, great Kun Gamir champion. Um, I mean, he gets compared to everybody, like, you know, the Ernesto Hoos and the Rob Damons. And, yeah, he's a huge name here. Transitioned in MMA, but he was also an ISKA title holder. And that is why they brought it out. Not only are they bringing out the raffle boxes and giving some more prizes to the audience, but they are highlighting the ISKA titles that are on the line here tonight in the 65 kg, 57 kg, and 75 kg categories. ISKA titles are on the line. Kun Kamir growing, expanding, taking over. Taking over. Taking over. Again, John, so many shows just on Bayon TV. Kun Kamir. Every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes even on a Monday, sometimes on a Thursday. Yeah, I know, bro. While we're doing this show here, they are in the studio doing another show. That tells you how much it's growing. If you are a foreign fighter, and especially as a foreign fighter, you have so much of a hard time finding fights, you should come to Cambodia, you should come to Phnom Penh. There are a bunch of gyms here. But the main thing, there are a lot of fights here for you guys. Come on down. Get a fight. Get two fights. Get four fights in one month. Why not? Why not? And that's what I'm talking about. Go every weekend. Raise your record. Live the dream. Be, again, the hero in your own movie. And get paid in hard, cold American USD? dollars. USD? Greenbacks? <laughs> yeah, man. Can't wait to see Raph in the future on one of these Gansberg. I don't come here. I'll, I'll be on one in the future. I don't know about that, man. I'm old and fat. But, you know, maybe they could get somebody for it's me. okay. Right? Okay. I'll put it, Thank you. I'll put in a word for you. Thank you. You know ah. people. You know people. I, I know a guy. I got a guy in Cambodia. Right? Oh, it's wonderful, though, again, coming to these last three fights on the match, on the uh, card tonight, April 7, 2024. Gansberg, Idol Kun Kamir, and again, these last three matchups on the night, all three of them are ISKA Kun Kamir world title matches. Again, our uh, MCs, our hosts with the most, just going over the sponsors, the guys that really provide and make, you know, not everybody happy. Everybody happy, right? They make everybody here in Phnom Penh happy because they're bringing out 35,000 people onto this huge fairground for Gansberg, for Idol, for Boost Strong, and of course for Freshy, which if you haven't had this apple, 
right there. Good. That's delicious. Dude, nah. The honey lemon the honey tea freshie. Just like lemon last time, it was amazing. The honey lemon is the winner, in my personal opinion. I, I, I do go with the uh, apple, but the honey lemon is the winner. Uh, make sure you try it when you come here. So fun to go to the convenience stores around here. There's still a lot of mom and pop ones, not just the seven L's, if you will. The mom and pop stores have some amazing things to taste. And that, uh, that honey lemon right there is... Definitely top of the lists. Definitely is. Definitely Again, is we got a history in the making as we do have our first ever foreign referee, I think, doing this fifth bout of the evening. Former UFC fighter and full metal dojo champion, uh, Tommy, the wild card Hayden, make his first appearance as a foreign referee here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Raf, again, you should get into that too, bro. Diversify Definitely. yourself, you know what I mean? If you, Obviously, you've done the judging and the, the scoring. Have you ever gotten into the refereeing of Kun Kamir? I have never gotten to referee, but that's yeah. definitely something that I should probably look into. I think maybe, maybe I could be the second foreigner to referee here in we Cambodia. Can, we can all get into line right now. We can all get into line. Second, third, you know, we just keep switching roles. I'm ready, steady, go. <laughs> So many winners here tonight, not just in the matchups, but also televisions, microwaves, motorbikes. Absolutely epic. And of course, the greatest sponsor, Gansberg, Idol, Freshy, Boostrong. Treating the people right. And that's what you need to do. Yeah. You treat people right, they come back. Right? You want more. Make a good product, have good people on board. Synergy, it's right there, but John, it all comes together. I think most people would have come, even if there wasn't motorbikes or cars, I think most people oh, would have already come just to watch the high level okay, fights we have here tonight. And we have a special treat. Oh, wow. We have a Cambodian rapper gonna perform yeah. for us right now, for us go, and the go. crowd. Ficka, 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 fresh. Before we get to ISKA action, before we get our hip hop on. Got the Jordans. Big up, big up. I'm 
ไอ้ก็ออกคุณดอกแกนสเปิร์ดให้ก็ไอดอลลิกเนียบ่าออกคุณจราดบาดสมออกคุณดอกแกนสเปิร์ดให้ก็ไอดอลลิกเนียบ
getting his prime introduction from our hosts with the most. A lot of fun and a lot of laughter being had in that corner, am I right? Yes, he is. Lots of experience, though. Of course, 130 fights from the veteran Pom yeah. Sawan Chiang Mai JR Jim. Ponsawan JR. Again, fantastic dude seen him fight plenty right I mean he's been everywhere a lot not not his first rodeo definitely not an absolute veteran of the sport he just recently opened up his own gym up in Chiang Mai Thailand okay called called Ponsawan Chiang JR Ponsawan Chiang Mai JR yeah exactly it all works out with the branding here exactly. when it comes to martial arts <laughs> Gansberg Idol Kung Khmer, April 7, 2024. Big shout out to Gansberg Idol, Boost Strong, Freshy. And of course, each and every one of you joining us around the globe, listening to the English commentary. Raph and I couldn't be more elated that you are checking us out. So please give a like and a subscribe to everything Bayon TV and everything Idol Kung Khmer. Again, historical fifth bout of the evening, pitting Iran versus Thailand in the 65 kg ISKA championship Kun Khmer title on the line. And also historical because it's our first foreign referee ever here in the Gansberg ring. T former UFC fighter, former fighter of all things combat sports. I mean, I've seen the guy box. I've seen him, man, he, he does it all. And uh, Tommy the Wildcard Hayden, first referee, uh, foreign referee here at Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer. Kudos and congrats for him on that historical hash point. And John, that's the kind of stuff that is going on here in Cambodia right, right? now. Thanks to Bayon, thanks to Gansberg, against, thanks to Idol, against, thanks to Bootstrong. They could have just stayed having the regular shows, bringing in these large crowds, but no, they chose to bring in the international ISKA, legitimize the sport. It's just amazing scene. Also, like you said, of course, bringing in such an experienced referee and former fighter in Tommy. Yeah, it's great to see it grow even bigger and wait for the shows to go international later on in the third and fourth quarter of this year. Now, John, I've been training with Aliyah at Starlight Gym for the past two weeks. Aliyah, an absolute professional. Fantastic. Trains like an absolute professional. Wakes up every morning, does his run, comes in, hits his pads. Afternoon, same thing. This man, you cannot keep him out of the gym, and that's why he is so dangerous. But across from him, of course, the veteran, Pom Sawan Chiang Mai JR. Yeah, again, heck of a fight, heck of a championship. Both guys weighed in at the 65 kg. Very respectful as you just saw them touch gloves. Priyam, priyam. Ready, ready. Ready, steady. And again. Round one starts up of this first ISKA Kun Khmer Championship belt. Pansawan in the blue. Ali Asgar in the red. That ring is very slippery from all the fights before. Both fighters almost slipping. Aliyah and Pumsawan both feeling each other out. Big heavy inside kick. Oh, that left, that left wow. hook from Aliyah. I'm telling you, this kid has power in his left hand. And experience enough to land up on top there. Referee brings him back in. Very tough. Oh, catches the elbow. And that elbow stunned Pumsawan. It was a short right elbow, but Pumsawan, you see the experience, immediately engaged, engaged the clinch to give himself some time. Aliyah needs to keep coming forward, needs to close the distance, can't give any range to the TIE fighter. No, Pumsawan's on his back foot, but he basically he's once again just trying to range out the game, right? Doesn't want to get hit with one of those elbows again, you could tell. 
Both fighters having a tough time with the uh, slippery canvas. But again, everybody has to play in the same masterpiece. Nice spinning stuff. The kids love it. It brings everybody to the yard. Ponsawan trying to find a home for that knee. As he left his glove right there on Ollie's hair. And look at those calves. The that man right in Thailand has huge legs. Those hands from Ali are landing heavy. He's trying to find that right hand. He's trying to find a home for that right hand is, is Aliyah. But again, the veteran very smart. As soon as he gets hit, he engages the clinch, slows down the Iranian fighter. Pumps out one now on the back foot, using that team to the leg, create distance, create range. Aliyah, of course, trying to close that range. Aliyah, two right body kicks. Landing well for Aliyah. Coming in with a left hook that misses. Exchange of hands. Pumps out one smiling. Right hand from Aliyah, followed by a right up elbow in the clinch. They go broken up by our great ref, Tommy Hayden. Right hand from Aliyah again. Yeah, again. Both of these guys are trying to play the elbow war right now. Upward swinging to overhand. And again, another big shot comes as they trade leather on faces, literally at the exact same time. That was wonderful to see. Both guys teeing off right now. The haymakers are coming. The farmers are out. What's in the field? These boys are traded. Oh! Rocky. And got and Aaliyah there. Be, he's got to be careful. He got caught with a right hand. Trying to find the right elbow is Aaliyah. Pumps on one now, turning it up, going to the body, changing up levels. Aaliyah missing with that right elbow. Ponsawan's flurry right there at the end of round one. Ponsawan's flurry, you saw that, the speedy hands come out there. Love to see more of that in the uh, in the second round. Great first round by both fighters. I really do feel like Aliyah Asgar, I mean, again, the guy was taking it at the, at the beginning of that first round. The overhand, like you said, that landed, that connected, that was good. The experience that uh, Ponsawan has obviously then came out in the second part of that first round. And I will say again, from the teeps to the flurry of the punch, he's switching up the motions. I like seeing the punches and the combinations that uh, Ponsawan has been has adjusting to. Going to be a very special round number two and three if we go the full distance. Raf, what did you think, brother? John. That's a very hard round to score. I believe Aaliyah was winning the be, the first half of that round, maybe even three-fourths of that round. But Pumsawan, the experience, every time Pumsawan got hurt, he was very smart. He engaged in the clinch, got the body lock, or even the top position. Yeah. And just slowed down Aaliyah, gave himself those precious seconds to recover. Correct. Whereas Aaliyah, once again, may be controlling the action in terms of where it's going. Ponsawan is controlling the pace. Yes, he is, and that's and that's the experience. That's the experience that you see. Aliyah can't get he can't get trigger happy. No, no. If he fires off too many of those fireworks, it's not the Fourth of July, baby. You know, again, if he fires off too much, the more experienced fighter is going to stay calm, cool, and collected like a cucumber. And again, that will be the trap that that man will set. And that's what I kind of want to see here. That's why it's so interesting. Raf is watching what I'm watching, and that is the corner of my man from Iran so far away. Um, they're literally firing him up. If he comes out here and you know blows a gasket, that would be on that. Remember, we're going three, three-minute rounds of championship ISKA Kun Khmer action with two minutes in between rounds for the fighters to regroup. Again, I like seeing the coaches in the red corner. As Aliyah stretches out those hamstrings one more time, and we are about to get up and underway. Let's get up and let's get ill, Kun Khmer fans. This is Gansberg Idol Kun Khmer Championship action. Let's look at the replays here. That right elbow followed by that short left hook. But see, Ponsa one very smart engaging the clinch. He gets, he gets getting caught with that right hand as Ponsa one. Man, remember them when they were trading? I enjoyed in, the trading. In the last 30 oh, seconds. Oh, that was fun. That was beautiful to see. Exchanging of rear hands. 
Aliyah's corner, hyping him up. And the crowd going really, Obviously really Obviously, we can't start the action without the round card girl. That was the problem. She was walking just a little too delicately, a little slow. But now the crowd loves her, right? They all love her. And who doesn't? Who wouldn't? Smell the testosterone. So why not bring in some estrogen? I think Pumsawan might be cut under his left eye. There was some Vaseline being applied. It might be just a small little nick. Aliyah coming in. Into the clinch state. Go. Pumsawan very smart here. Just holding over. To the body he goes. And again, slips it up with the legs. Now again, a little slippery canvas. Both of them are going to have to deal with it. It's just going to be a problem. Back with the leg. My man from Iran looking deep in to his opponent, trying to find out where to go as he comes in and tags with a combination of punches. Eats the legs. Doesn't even try to check. Just going to take it on it. And he switches stance. Ponsawan staying in control of the pace again. The Aliyah beats now. are all on his side. Aliyah now in southpaw trying to land that left, that left body kick in that left hand. Little low kick there to the groin. This ring is really slippery. Pumps are one doing well with those low kicks. Aliyah's got to check those. Aliyah on the back foot now, trying to find that right hand. Pumps are one. Having the space, creating his rhythm. Yeah, both of the guys are having a little bit of problem with the uh, slippery canvas. Aliyah brings it in, closes the distance, and they both go against the, the ropes. Referee brings him back, back to square. Almost on the Gansberg sign. And again, Ponsawan trying to really systematically take his uh, opponent out of his game. Brings up the glove again, and every time they bring up the glove like it's sportsmanship, one of them throws something, so it's a little cheeky. Very interesting right now, John. Oh, big right hook. He By said Aaliyah, he but being called a slip, that ring is very slippery. It's very interesting right now how Aaliyah has gone into softball. Those low kicks must, must have effect. Right. I'm actually, again, assuming that he did that because he doesn't want to receive that leg kick that was just thrown for a miss right there. But also, the canvas has to play into this. Ponsawan, very, very shifty in there. Smiles like the land that he's from. Ponsawan, look at his legs. He is from the Northern Hill Tribe in Thailand. They are known for massive legs. And those low kicks must be paid for. Aliyah good with a good left body kick. Good right body kick, but being answered by Ponsawan with a left body kick. Yeah, wonderful trading again. When one gets hit, the other goes. Big overhand right. They are back in the red corner. And again, stalemated as he goes in. The experience of Pumsawan is so evident. He's such a cerebral fighter. End of round two. Sportsmanship shown again by both dudes as they go back to their uh, corners. Man, again, I like when the trading happens. I'd still say the case is the same. Ponsawan a little bit controlling the pace, but but um, Aliyah really, I'm not gonna say that he's controlling the action, but he's landing more of his significant strikes on Ponsawan. Aliyah is definitely landing the heavier shots, but we see the experience of Ponsawan any time Aliyah lands a big shot, which he could use to create those long combinations. Right. Ponsawan is so smart, he close distance and slows everything down in the clinch. Right, and, that, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about controlling the pace. Neither of these guys really wants the ring control because, let's face it, the canvas is ice right now. They are slipping, they are trying to do everything they can about it right now. Literally, there are two men in there trying to dry it off. But if you are in one of those neutral corners or you are on the Gansberg uh, sign, you are on ice. Um, so again, I, I give it up for both of these guys. Fantastic action. Ponsawan again, really controlling the pace of it though. Really controlling the pace. 
John, so after two after two rounds, how would you score that? Man, I don't know. Again, it's really, really tough because Aliyah did score more damage, right? He's got he's at least got one of those rounds in his book. You could kind of give the second round to Ponsawan if you wanted to. Uh, uh, my man from Iran would have it if this was it for me. But again, <laughs> that is not our job. Yeah, I know. I, I coughed that out. What a great time we are having here in PP Cambodia. You should go there again. Gansberg, Idol Kunt Khmer. This is historical bout number five. Ali Asgar from Iran in the red corner. Pan Sawan, JR Muay Thai from Thailand in the blue corner. And again, very even matchup for this ISKA woo, Kun Kamir title fight. And in the corner now, Aliyah's corner telling him he's got a box. That's where he's seen the most effective strike, the most significant strike. He needs to box. Comes to one's corner, just telling him keep on doing what you're doing, keep on controlling the pace, keep controlling the rhythm. Very, it's, it's gonna be a very interesting third round. It's about who wants it more. And look at the replace. That left hook, the boxer of Ali is so good. But Pumsa won with those massive low, low kicks. That was a slip. That it was, was a slip. And that was a great call by our friend Tommy. Yeah. The Tommy doing a good job. Yeah, exactly. Doing a great job in this historical inaugural matchup that is here again 65 kg iska kun Khmer title on the line round number three being shown by our lovely ring girl who is getting all the hands all the applause coming her way round three final round both guys come in Knock the sweat off each other's dome piece right off the bat. Pumso one coming out really aggressive in his open in, in his third round. Good control. Uh, stopped himself from throwing that knee. The ref having to work overtime to break these boys up. Pumso one trying to go back to that low kick, left body kick from Ali. I think Ponsawan kind of knows. Again, he's getting more aggressive here in the third round because he wants to take it in the eyes of the judges if he's not going to get the KO. Three three-minute rounds, remember, with three judges at ringside. Ali is staying a little bit more composed, probably because his corner has told him he thinks he's got it. As he comes with the uh, right elbow, it is a swing and a miss. The clinch is very tight up on, on them against the ropes. And referee starts the action up again. Great body lock had there. Splits him up and here we go again. Aliyah trying to come in with a with a left step in elbow. Pumps him on very smart, shakes hands and trying to go for that low kick. Aliyah already knows what's going on. Steps back for that low kick. Both these guys show lots of respect. They 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 both respect each other's power. Both faith and right hand lands for Aliyah, but a left head kick lands for Punta One. Pumps on on the ropes by a distance. Beautiful duck under, just missing the elbow. And it is that elbow that could leave that mark. That's what could do it in the eyes of these judges. Controlling that pace is what Pantawan has been doing, but controlling the action is where Aliyah is standing right now. Very tough one to judge here. Pumps one big cut. Big combo there, slip by Aliyah in the in the red corner. Aliyah trying to find something, being countered a lot by Pomsoan. I like the again the show of uh, sportsmanship and sticking out the hand, but I also like when he's cheeky and throws the kick at the same time. Right Aliyah. kick, left kick lands for Aliyah. Aliyah trying to land something here. Going, going to Southpaw, Aliyah. Pumps a one is so is so sneaky here. Right hand left for Aliyah. Pumps a one was hurt, but again, look at the experience from Pumps a one. Look, 
The ref trying to try to break them up. Punzo One still hanging on. That is a veteran move. Yeah, great action had by there at the end of round three. The bell sounds it, and we will go to our judges' scorecards. Very tough match up there, but you can see the replay. He got rocked there at the end. Did the great hold on, had him. But, but when you were in there, man, that was a big one. I don't know if it was the canvas that made him wobbly, or was it the actual shot? That's the tough one. That's like what I kind of want to see. Let's look for the replay. I think I think it was the right hand because as soon as it landed, his 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 knees buckled. Oh, I'm with you. But he didn't go down. No, he did not go down. There it is. Look at that. There it is. And you saw the eyes roll too, right? So that was a fantastic overhand right. Thank you, Gansberg, for that replay. Referee Tommy Hayden will go to the judges' scorecards for their deliberation. Both guys still getting a word from their respected corners, taking off the gloves as well. Our host with the most, again, going over what I just said, that the deliberation of the scorecards will be done by our judges at Gansberg ringside. Pansawan again versus Aliyah Asgar. And Raf, you know, I wouldn't be sad if it was a draw. I wouldn't be sad if it was Aliyah. Uh, I don't think that Pansawan did enough to take the W this time. That's just being realistic, yeah. Even with the veteran moves, I think those blows at the end, the more damage was scored. Let's see how, how they have it. It is definitely going to be interesting how the judges scored this fight. Very hard fight to score, John. ปาทีบันตอนนี้ปาสมประกอบปาตัวนิติปาตะการบองประสิทธิ์ทนทันปาสำหรับรัฐพอลคิวนิกรหอมสมสมเลยตอนต้องกดคิวจบประกอบกระ
Oh wow, wow! Again, you 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 called it. You were looking at me saying, "What's up?" Ponsawan takes it in the eyes of the judges. Again, fantastic job by all involved. What do you think the key to victory was there, Raf? What what did I personally not see? John, it was the control. Yes, Aliyah did land some big shots, but that's all he did. He landed one big shot and wasn't able to build up off it. Now, sure, he wobbled Pumsa one, but Pumsa one still never dropped. And every time that he did get wobbled, he came back in, controlled the clinch, gave him some time, and then scored, scored, scored. He controlled the pace, he could, he could throw the rhythm. It's hard, it's hard to score if you're not watching Kung Kamur often. I understand. I'm with you. And again, we now have a new 65 kg ISKA Kung Kamur title winner, Pansawan JR Muay Thai. Fantastic action had. And again, we've got two more title belts on the way. Let's give it up for these guys. Let them have their championship moment. And your champion, first ever Kun Kamur ISKA champion. Pom Sa Wan Chiang Mai Junior Jim. Beautiful performance from the veteran Pom Sawan. Controlling the pace, controlling the distance. All showing all the little intricacies of what Kun Kamur is. Absolutely great fight from both these fighters. Pom Sawan, the veteran, being able to use his experience to edge it out and win this ISKA belt. Beautiful fight, beautiful fight from both these warriors. I would love to see that fight yet again. បាទមុនមានបន្តិចគឺជើងឯកបានទៅខាងប្រេះរាជនិច្ចថ្ងៃតែគាត់យកឈ្នះកីឡាករអ៊ីរ៉ង់មុនតិចទីនេះព្រះ
me coming to Cambodia for my first time ever. Tommy, I thought that you did a great job. You you were able to get the respect of the fighters. You 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 were able to break them up very easily. And of course, you looked out for the safety of the fighters the entire time. Yeah, the uh, the ring was a bit slick. You know, that's that's what we've seen all all uh, all evening. And uh, yeah, you know, I I know that. Uh, Kun Pansuan, he it looked like he got dropped at one point, but that was uh, in the second round, and it, there was definitely quite a lot of water there. So couldn't count it as a drop. Had to get him back up. He was fine anyways. Assumed, you know, assumed getting back to fighting right away. All in all, it was an excellent fight. The, both the guys were in there cracking each other. They they let it all on the line. For for sure, Tommy. That what that fight was back and forth action. Aliyah landed really well with his right hand and his left hook. Yep. But Pomsawan started with those low kicks, and you saw how Aliyah had to switch into southpaw. He did. Yeah. Those those low kicks took a toll on his legs for sure, for sure. I think that that possibly changed the outcome of the fight. That alone. Uh, then, as as you know, as you were talking about earlier off mic, he was able to control very well. So when he did get rocked, and he did, he instantly was able to clinch, slow down the action, bring it down to his face, and uh, let me break him and get back to it. So it was a really good fight. And Tommy, how how slippery and wet is is that ring? I mean, the logos on on that canvas are are quite slick to where. I I noticed the fighters actively avoided them. They actively actively avoided fighting in the center of the ring, which I don't blame them because I wouldn't want to blow a knee out either. Right, right, of you course, know? of course. Well, Tommy, an absolute pleasure having you ref. That was that was amazing. I'm, Making history, Tommy. It's a history thing, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> no, life no, life sure. happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure I'll figure out how I feel about this later. But right now. Life's just happening. Yeah, man. Look <laughs> at that in the glow moment. on your face right now. Living man. in the moment, bro. All right. Awesome. John is back. I'm going to get out of here and go drink some water and find a trash can for these gloves. An absolute pleasure, Tommy. All right, Rafael. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Thomas Hayden in there getting inaugural and historical. There he is. First uh, foreign referee. Amazing, right? A great job. He did. A, we just talked about that. He did an absolute great job. Yeah. I think we should have him back every single time. Gansberg, I don't. I don't think Kamara has a fight. Put him on the team. Put him on the team. Bayon, add him to the team. Exactly. Two more fights coming up for you. Two more ISKA titles. First one, 57 kg. And again, Cambodia's own Bunsete, who we, again, we enjoy him. Yeah, we, we enjoy him quite a bit. Good dude. And again, Umar Red Wolves, hanging from Malaysia. This is a 57 kg. We've already seen his partner in crime uh, on the card earlier today. And again, that Malaysian had quite the chin on him. If you remember, he could take some punishment. Uh, Bunsete, we've seen him a couple times. Young guy, 21 years young. But with, with that 21 years of age comes 110 fights of experience for him. Right? I mean, absolutely wild. Wow. Big records by both guys. John, absolutely staggering fight number there for this young man, Bun Sote. 21 years of age, just like you said, 110 fights. I need to win 16 losses, two draws, and 16 KOs. Yeah. This young man is a veteran. Yeah, I know. A veteran already. It is going to be a heck of a fight. And again, this is the inaugural ISKA Kun Khmer title. Pitting again, Cambodia versus Malaysia. Right, Nagara Ku, my friends, as we show over to our officials, the guys that make it what it is, a sport, right? Without those guys, just be a couple dudes fighting in a field. And nobody wants that because then nobody gets paid. Correct. It's not a sport. Not a sport. Got to go by definition, if you will. 
Oh, the shade's coming on. It is ISKA tried title action, you know what I mean? It is the second ever. Might have to ever. throw the Godfathers on, yes. It is, yes it is. The Nagaraku, my friends, Nagaraku. I actually kind of know how to sing Nagaraku, right? It's their national anthem, I know. It's kind of wild that I know these things. So he's coming out, same headpiece on, right? Got the Cobra coming up. Loving the pyrotechnics here. Absolutely amazing. And this man is Umar Red Wolves, hailing from Malaysia, 22 years young, 173 CM standing, 57 kg weighing, 50 fights. 50 fights with 39 wins, eight losses, and three draws. Of those 39 wins, 37 are via KO. Give it up for Umar Red Wolves. <laughs> And his opponent from Cambodia, Bun Sotong. This young man, 21 years of age, 175 centimeters tall, fighting at 57 kilograms, 110 fights, 92 wins, 16 losses, two draws, and 16 KOs. Very big fight here for both these fighters, Bun Sote and Umar Red Wolves, or Umar, also known as Abu Bakr Ali. Very big fight in both these fighters' careers. I, I S K A Kunchamer belt up for grabs. Again. This would be the co-main event of the evening, bout number six. Gansberg Idol, Kun Kamir, April 7th, 2024. And this is the ISKA Kun Kamir title. In that there, 57 kg weight class. <laughs> John, we're moving right along. Can't believe we're up to our co-main event already. Time flies when you're having fun, Raf. John, it feels like it feels like we just got here, and of course, commentating with you, my friend, it's right. always a blast. Thoroughly entertaining to sit in the best seats of the house and have some of the best Kun Kamir action ever take place in front of us. I'd like to again thank the Brewmaster at Gansberg. I'd like to thank Freshy, Boo Strong, and of course Idol for bringing Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir to the masses. Please give a like and subscribe to everything Bay on TV in Gansberg. Idol Kun Kamir. Gloves are being put on, remember? Even with this championship action, they've come down with the, the wraps on, gloves off. Malaysia versus Cambodia. Introductions being made by the Cambodian Buffer Brothers. We will soon get into the Kun Crew and then into the action for this ISKA 57 kilogram championship fight. Bun Satia getting that large welcoming, and the Cambodian crowd obviously has his back. Wonderful headdress worn there by the Malay. Malaysia. KL. Love it. Big shout out to Prem and Jack Star.
The audience does ebb and flow here. Nice show going on. PP Cambodia, you should go there. And again, the music starts up. The lights take action. And Cambodia takes a knee to give respect to the martial art of the country, the national martial art of the country, Kung Khmer. Heritage, culture, all of it, right? It's a yes. bit of everything. The Kung crew showing respect to their gyms, their families, and to the beautiful sport of Kung Khmer. Both of these fighters quite tall, John. Yeah. The tall Cambodian glass of water right there. They're very, very tall and long. The Cambodian fighter being 175 centimeters. And the Malaysian fighter actually being 178 centimeters. Yep. May I uh, may I make a note that we have not commented that Umar Red Wolves is that not one of the cooler names that you've ever heard? This is coming from John Nutt right now. I got a pretty powerful <laughs> name. Umar Red Wolves. That's a pretty is this cool guy name. Apache, right? You know what I mean? I, that's what I feel. Malaysian I get Apache. Like a Malaysian North American Indian style going. Umar. Red Wolves. Combination, awesome, right? I'm loving it, I'm loving it. And that's the kind of stuff that we bring to you here on Bay on TV. Right, international goodness. Exactly, Gansberg, Idol, Kung Khmer, bringing in the top talent to Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh on the rise, a city with a sky rise landscape that is just on the move. Absolutely wonderful. They don't exactly have the twin towers, the Patronus ones that KL has, but they got Knock World, and I enjoy that. Right? Idol, Kung Khmer, Gansberg, ISKA, 57 KG title on the line. And again, Pun Sate, fighting out of the red corner. Umar Red Wolves, Malaysia Zone. Fighting out of the blue corner. They are absolutely matching each other in their uh, <laughs> in their dancing, right? Absolutely beautiful. Couldn't cruise being performed by both the Malaysian and Cambodian fighter. And the crowd loving it getting behind both fighters. Malaysi, they say. I like that. Malaysia. I like that too, John. I like that too very much, John. Moments away from getting this action started. The second ever ISKA fight, Kun Khmer, taking place right now. ISKA 57 kilogram championship being contested by Umar Red Wolves from Malaysia and Bun Sote from Cambodia. Cambodian fighter Bun Sote in the red corner. The Malaysian fighter Umar Red Wolves in the blue corner. Umar Red Wolves, such a strong name. Again. Strong, strong. Yeah, wolves, dude. Anytime you have a wolf in your name, you're pretty awesome. Just And not saying. just regular wolf, it's no. red wolf. No, I know, I know. Round card being held up. Number one. I know because I watch beautiful girls hold up ring cards very regularly. And I'm saying that the Gansberg girls, booyaka shot. Lovely. Absolute professionals. It. Absolute professionals. Creme de la creme when it comes to uh, round card girls. John, before you mentioned maybe I should become a referee, should I also become a ring card boy? I think that you should do it all. I 100% believe that you can shoot across the board at whatever you want to do. You're young, 
you're, you're virile, right? You've got spunk, you've got moxie, and you've got a couple other STDs I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Saw what I did there. I love it. Oh. Round one kicks off in this 57 kg ISKA title main event. Co-main event, excuse me. Umar does southpaw. Well, started off in southpaw, doing well with a left kick and left knee. But Boone coming in with a big right elbow already. The crowd getting wild off it. Left kick from Umar. Left kick again from Umar. Wow, Boone they're coming out the again. They're coming out very cold and collected, right? Looking each other up. And again, two tall glasses of water right here. Very long, very rangy. Lanky madness is going on in this. And again, he, you can see he came over with the right. Both these guys trying to figure out when they want to set it off. Oh, that left kick might have hurt Bun. That left kick from Umar is doing very well. The body might be hurt. Bun seems to have recovered. You know, Boone is normally the taller of his uh, of his adversaries, right? He's normally the taller guy in there. I wonder if getting matched up with another another piece of lanky goodness is uh, doing his head in. Great Boone. little stalemate happening here. Nobody's coming over with the elbow, but the knees did come up as the referee splits him up. That left kick from Umar is doing really well. He's doing doing great mixing it up with his left knee. Boone stepping in with that right elbow, just missing. Umar able to get into the clinch, land some sharp knees. Boone, sharp, short elbows though. Red Wolves is staying composed, man. Brings the knee up into play. And they trade again. It's that over elbow that people are going for. They want to round it out and stab down. Spins it out. Good cross face from Budden. This that was ring. slip. Yep, this ring again. It's absolute ice right now. Both guys find it a very amusing. It's that left leg of Red Wolves that I want to see him get implemented. Whenever he brings it up, Sate does not seem to enjoy it at all. And it's and it's a trick, right? He'll throw it like it's a red kick. Oh, he's blasted! He's blasted! He's covering himself up! Boon Sate trying to get a knee in there. Referee on top of the action. That was a crazy elbow and he is cut! And the crowd is going wild! Boon! Seeing the blood trying to step in with the elbows. Right elbow just missing there for Boone. Right elbow lands that time. The referee, the Dungeons are standing up already. That cut is mean. Not only are the fans getting to their feet, but so is the medical team. The blood is coming over and the elbow goes back for its mark. Boone really breaking his opponent's posture here in the clinch. End of round one. And the volume goes on all peak high as the Cambodians lose their minds for Boon Sate after that terrific elbow struck gold out of the blue corner. And he is giving his fans what they want as the cut man go over to Umar Red Wolves. You know, again, I, I, he felt it. He clearly felt it. He was shook, right? Shook ones, no shook ones, right? And that's the mob deep stuff right there. But I will tell you what, when it paused him, you saw him get composure again. And he did the same thing, he checked. And once you check, no offense, but like if you're checking it, it obviously hurts you, you know? And it's obviously causing some pain, some some grief, whatever you want to call it. Umar Red Wolves in the blue corner, getting worked on. Boon Sate in the red corner, all smiles. And people are, are just telling him to use that elbow again and again and again. John, that was a super interesting round. Um, Umar controlled the round the whole time. There was one point where he might have hurt Bun with a left okay. body kick. Yeah. But then Bun at the last 30 seconds landed in with that right elbow wobbling Umar and of course giving him that Cambodian tattoo. Right. Changed the whole pace of the fight. Cambodian back to his feet first as Umar Red Wolves comes off his stool as well. Remember, we're going three, three minute rounds of championship ISKA Kung Kamir Idol action. But we do have two minutes between the rounds for these guys to get their composure back. Both fighters are on their feet. 
You can see the patch of Vaseline over the left eye of Umar Red Wolves. So again, it is in a position where it could cause not only discomfort, but a little unsteadiness to the visual impairment that could happen in that left eye. And again, they are going over the Vaseline quite heavily right now with that. John, that, that cut is definitely gonna interfere with his left eye, but yeah. what I'm more worried about is that his corner's looking at the opposite eye. They're also looking at the right eye. Let's not men let's not forget that that is also a huge target for Bunsate. He's looking at it. He's already focused on it. Where do you think the man wants to land his uh, his fists? <laughs> right his fist on that is. mark. Heck of a mark. Gansberg, Ido Kunkamir action. Let's look at the replay, John. Those left kicks. We're so effective in the opening part of this first round. But then that elbow beautifully placed through the guard and another up elbow as he comes in. Again, thank you, Gansberg, for that fantastic replay. And big ups to all my Malaysian peeps again. Prem Nasty, Jack Diesel, Rashid, the Dream. People are losing their minds here. Yes. Round number two coming up. I know that because our Gansburg girl is letting us know. Big praise to her. If I knew her Instagram, I would give it a shout out. This crowd's really getting excited for the yeah, potential. You can feel, the, you can feel it. You can feel you the can, tension. You can Cut feel it. it. You can feel it. They are cheering on Bun. They want to see the first Cambodian ISKA champion to be to be crowned after this fight. Right hand lands for Bun. I can imagine Red Wolves trying to stay away and keep that range with the kicks as he jumps up with the knee. Again, he's gonna try to keep his face and those eyes away from my man's elbows as they both collide fist to face, leather hits. Bun Sate puts his back up against the ropes, allowing Red Wolves to take a little ring control right here. Umar now back back on the back foot into the clinch state. Go. Watch for the elbows from Bun. Spinning, spinning elbow try. Unsuccessful. Bun starting to land some knees and elbows of his own. That right elbow is so dangerous, it's just barely missing. Bun really looking for that right elbow to land. Short right up elbow lands for Bun. Again, those gloves on those faces do knock, knock Vaseline off. So you can see the messy smear of blood already on Umar Red Wolf's face as the elbows keep on trying to come up. They're in the clinch game. A knee goes to the backside. Malaysian competitor turns on the heat again. Right back into it. Bun unrelenting. He eat, he's eating some shots, but he's still coming forward. Breaking Umar in the clinch. Taking his back, landing some heavy knees to the midsection. The crowd feeling that Umar might be on his way out, getting behind Bun Sote. Wow, almost dipped out of the ring there. Referee brings them back in. And again, they both try for that elbow. The knees come up. Omar looks a little winded as he takes a shot to the back again. And that is game time in Kunkamir. The oh. elbows are at play fully. And the crowd is going buck wild for this knee game that brings Umar to the Gansberg canvas. And Bun smells it. He sees that he's stronger in the clinch. Every time they go in the clinch, Bun is doing really well. Beautiful lock up here, finding some knees. Umar is absolutely gassed. Bun starting to take over and the crowd seeing it. Short right elbow lands for Bun. Umar on wobbly legs. Right hand, left hook for Bun. Right uppercut for Bun. And saved by the bell is Umar Redwolves. What a second round for Bun Sauté. 
Kelly Kapowski saved by the bell. I'm talking energy is drained right now. Both guys are open mouth breathing, very winded. But Umar, there at the end, looked like life was leaving the body. I'm telling you what, Bunsate didn't e couldn't really even turn up the heat because he was tired too. But yes. you could see the physical, the visual, visual, physical exhaustion from Umar Red Wolves there at the end. It's just that forward pressure and. Bun is doing really well when he gets into the clinch. He's swimming in and he's throwing these short right up elbows in the clinch while also makes up his knees, draining, taking the soul out of Umar Red Wolves. Yeah, it's pretty non-stop action. Again, they were even throwing, they were throwing with no hesitation. They weren't throwing uh, with any target. But again, the guy who's putting it to his use in his game plan is my man from Cambodia right there, Bon Sete, getting his uh, advice from the corner man. But again, he's got a smile on his face. He's acknowledging his opponents. They got two minutes. Right now we go three, three minute rounds of ISKA Kung Khmer Championship action. Bon Sete letting out a big deep breath right there. Let's see what happens here in the third and final round and who will become the and new champion, ISKA Kun Khmer title holder. Bun Sote looking like he's digging in deep, giving some, yeah. giving some love to the crowd. And the crowd, of course, responded, giving him a big whoop. Absolutely Umar. overheating, too. <laughs> it is a fresh one this evening. It right? is very much so. Nine million degrees here. Bunsate, ready to go, fighting in the red corner. And again, Umar Red Wolves, Abu Bakr Ali, in the Nagaraku blue corner. At the moment, that's what it is. Gansberg, Freshy, Boost Strong. Pop the tops, you should get them. John, this is going to be a very interesting round. Bun needs to come forward, get back into that clinch, and just drown Umar. Now, Umar, his gas tank is drained. He needs to circle, move, and try to pull something out here in the third round. Let's look at the replay here. It's, it was just those elbows and the punches from Bun. Boom! Short right elbow there. That short right elbow from Boon landed every single time. What a sweet up uppercut that was, too. And I mean, very unanswered. Again, Umar, you could see the cardiovascular is really coming into play here, right? I mean, again, that boy needs to get it back up on his bike as he's got the Vaseline on all parts of his face at the moment. He's staying in there. I got hope for him, I got love for him, but let's see what goes on here in the third and final round of this championship Kun Khmer action. Third round, here we go. Let's see who wants it more. Both these fighters absolutely exhausted. Both fighters gotta dig in deep. ISKA 57 kilogram championship up for grabs. Who wants it more? Bun starting off hard. Exchange of kicks from, from both fighters. Every time Bun hits the crowd here, it erupts. Really getting lots of love from the Cambodian crowd here. Well, Good. based on the uh, previous rounds, we got to see Umar Red Wolf step it up, right? I know he's exhausted. I know the cardio's on short. But the only way for him to get this W is for him to put on the pressure right now because Bunsate technically clearly took that second round. Yes, he did, John. But that's dangerous seeing that. Oh, right elbow lands for Umar, but Bun unbothered. He just keeps coming forward. Those those straight punches landing really well for for Boon. 
Yeah, I like the guy. I mean, again, he's got good style. He's got great moves, but clearly, again, a, a pretty exhausted as he goes in spinning everything, right? And we love the spinning stuff as the elbow drops from the red corner. Still pacing him down. Bunsate goes to the body, rocks him, and, and the referee will give a standing count. He will. And Umar accepts it. He, he, he doesn't think anything of it. He says he's ready. He's walking forward. He's got to raise his hands. Let's see it, Umar. Yep. There we go. The referee does not want those to be unanswered. Oh, and he gets a kick straight to the face. Beautiful job from Bun. Let's let's see him put some more pressure on Umar. Trying for that deep to the face again. Just missing. Let's see if Bun's gonna go back down to the body. He had a lot of success. That's how he got that first A count. More jumping, spinning stuff, which the kids love, but a little too little too late, considering the amount of exhaustion that's being poured out there. Open mouth, open breathing. More spinning stuff. Again, trying to get that Hail Mary, that pass to just blast off. Instead, Bunsate shoots up the ribs a little bit, goes back down to the body again. Pops it back up to the head, which smears blood all across the cheek of Mr. Red Wolves. Bun really hunting another forward for that elbow. Really trying to find it. Another teacher to the face by Bun. Umar showing lots of heart. And a big head kick there by Bun. The crowd erupts here. Bun again playing with his prey now. Yeah, he seems to be putting feet to face whenever he wants it. Another one comes up. And that is the end of the third and final round. Respect is given to both fighters again. Sportsmanship as we go to the Gansberg replay. Boom, Booyaka shot. Big elbow dropped in there again. And that's what made the blood smear go. Huge, nice uppercuts that came from Bunsate. Again, you can see the exhaustion. <coughs> Umar Red Wolves. As he land one of his own. And that's the thing, again. Umar wasn't out there, right? I mean, he he landed some fun ones every once in a while, but he did have that standing count. So I gotta say, your winner is. Most likely going to be Bonsate, but we will go to the judges' scorecards in just a moment. John, it really seemed like Umar gassed himself out after that first round. Yeah. The second and third round, he was a shell of himself, and you could tell he was exhausted because he kept trying to throw spinning, spinning stuff, just yeah. trying to find that. That kill. Hail Mary pass. Hail Mary, exactly. Right, just trying to get it out there, trying to get it to land, maybe score that freak knockout that we all want, that highlight reel. Unfortunately, the spinning elbow did not land, and Bunsate is over there grinning ear to ear, which kind of tells you how it's going to go in, right? A man from Malaysia getting some ice on the back of his head, getting uh, attended to a couple little cuts there, whereas Bunsate, again, all smiles ear to ear, and I believe he will have his hand raised in just a moment. John, I'm, I'm very <laughs> curious about how many stitches Umar Red Wolves will, will receive he was not only cut above his left eye, but he was cut under his right eye. Right, yep, under the right eye. And again, clearly has some marks on the back of his head as well. Uh, John, your favorite man in Cambodia coming out for this belt. The brewmaster is in the house, and that means things are important, right? Gansberg, Freshy, Boostrong, Idol, Kung Kamir sponsors. I gotta say, the belts are coming out. The beautiful smelling necklaces coming out as well. What do you call those, you know? I do, I, right? no, I'm blanking I remember. And they're not Lotus, that's like, you know, whatever that good smelling stuff is at, you know, the New Year's that's coming up. Cambodia New Year's, a lot of Southeast Asian New Year's coming up. Water festivals will be played, right? It will be had. No losers in this ring. Does 
Does Bun have a necklace made out of real? Made out of real, real. That's what that I'm talking about. Cash. Mon that money. That is a money necklace. That's awesome. Oh, no, sorry. Just a regular necklace. No surprise there, John. Your winner and your new Kunkamura ISKA 57 kilogram champion, Bun Sautan. Bunsati, your winner again, going home with the white, red, white, and blue ISKA 57 kg belt, going home to Bunsati in Cambodia. Beautiful belt. Absolutely gorgeous belt here for Kun Khmer ISKA. What an accolade to receive here, the inaugural 57 kg champion. Great historical night here in Cambodia. It's good to see one of them go home with the big belt. More action to come in our main event of the evening, bout number seven. Again, is another ISKA title on the line in the 75 kg weight class this time. The Brewmaster in there, hands over the cup. Umar Red Wolves, Bunsate showing love for each other. Respect and sportsmanship, that's what it's all about. No losers in the Gansberg ring, but there is your new champion. And John, you said you, you hit it right on nail on the head. That is what Kunkamer is about. It's about mutual respect, mutual love. And warriors, these guys just beat each other up for three rounds and afterwards there is no animosity no. there is only love and it's so beautiful to see that is the essence of Kun Khmer. yep guts glory and of course Poon Sate now bringing in his daughter and his wife oh, beautiful to see you. right beautiful to see you. little family photo as he has the championship belt on oh little baby ain't, ain't loving it the way that we're loving it though are <laughs> Hilarious. A big hush has come over the crowd now, John. Everyone is excited. This is what everyone is here for. Yeah. They are excited People are see. waiting on bated breath right now because yes, we want are. that main event of the evening. You know what I mean? We want that main event of the evening. And again, it's because of the adopted child of Cambodia, the Brazilian Cambodian Sen Chanritikun, otherwise known as Tiago Teixeira. There you go. Yeah, again, this guy has been so warmly welcomed into the country. Uh, you've been training with him, Raphael. I have, what is, I what have. is the gym that you guys are training out of? I have been training with Tiago and Aaliyah at Starlight Club. Yeah. Starlight Club here in Phnom Penh. Top notch facility. You said it's got a pool. It's got a pool, it's got weights, it's got trainers, it's got training partners. If you're a fighter interested in coming out to Cambodia, you should definitely check it out. Oh, they're even talking about him right now, right? Got his name, they're all like smiling, they're all ha 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 ha. So this will again pit Cambodia Brazilian fighter Tiago or Sen Chandritikun against Turkey's own Sinan Kagla. Um, you spoke to him backstage, you're a fan. I am a big fan of the Turkish fighter just an absolute gem of a gem of a human being very easy to talk to very happy very relaxed i became, I became a fan okay. i'm a fan of both these guys but i became a fan of sinan just just for speaking to him right unbiased he's staying at the joy hotel with us lovely guy has a smile on his face the entire time great to see bunsate again getting some more love over here from the fans 
walking barefoot backstage on rocks. Oh, yeah. He is built different. Wonderful times had by all. And again, the main event of the evening is coming our way in just a moment. Got to give it up to Gansberg, Freshy, Boo Strong, and of course, Idol Kung Kamir here, April 7th, 2024. Hit like, hit subscribe, grow the game and support the sport. That is the golden age of Kun Kamir. Our teammates in the orange jacket, the Gansberg jackets, are Buffer Brothers of Cambodia doing such a lovely job this evening, being the host with the most, the MCs, the masters of the ceremony. And as they get ready to just go for it, the crowd again is on kind of bated breath. It's taking a little bit of a lull here because everybody's getting ready for that main event. Can't wait. Again, the adopted son, Tiago Teixeira, Sen, Chandriti Kun. Can't wait to see it. It's going to be fun. Off. He's been off for 10 months, as you said. 10 months. Let's see if there's some cobwebs there. Come, come back, fight. And, of course, Tiago could have could have asked for a scrub, but he didn't. That's that's that that speaks volumes to the kind of fighter and person he is. Yeah, I agree with you, man. Could have could have like probably hand chosen if he wanted, exactly. but does not want. Again, choosing an opponent from Turkey, 36 fights, 32 wins, six-time champion, three-time European champion, and one-time Turkey Pro Gold Belt champion. The, the man Sinan Kalaga, also known as the Honey Badger, oh, yeah. what a nickname! Honey Badger, don't give a what? We all know that. We've seen the videos. Honey, Honey Badger, don't care. Honey Badger, don't care. Oh, they, don't. they don't care. They do not care. Honey Badger don't give a what. These, and these are big boys. These are very big boys. Now both these guys have a lot of power in both their hands. So it should be fireworks. Lots of love for Boost Strong right there from our MCs. Yes. Sure. You, if you've never had one, it is an energy drink. Energy for sure. <laughs> prim Prim? Prim Prim? Ready, ready? Ready, ready. Giving love to again our uh, team of referees and making it a sport, right? So all the referees and officials are getting some love right now. If you add that angle right over there, they can get themselves flowers. They can write their names in the sand, right? Exactly, John. Where is the closest beach to Phnom Penh? We are on the Mekong River here in PP. Sinukville, I believe, is the closest beach you could write your name in the sand. Uh, as the officials come out, team photos are getting done. And of course, Gansberg is making this action happening. Everybody is getting ready on bated breath for this main event of the evening. The people really love Tiago, the son of, Cal the son of Cambodia. And the first fighter coming from Turkey, the Honey Badger, Senan Kagala. Senan Kagala, look at him. He's, he's a fun walkout right now. He's very intense. Not coming out throwing punches or anything. Coming out a lot meaner. Gnawing on his gums, taking a look at his flag. 
Ah, man, he's steady. This is a good walkout from a man. He is the honey badger. On. He is turned on. He is ready for this challenge. 75 kg ISKA country mark title up for grabs. He understands how big this moment is. He's taking it all in and he's ready to try his hand at Tiago Teixeira. Do you know if he is from Istanbul? Is he from? I mean, he is from Turkey. He's Great airport Turkey. over there. <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. Yeah, Turkey's wonderful. Got some great beaches there, too. Turkish fighter, again, inside the Gansberg ring as we bring out now the newly adopted son of Cambodia, Sen Chanritikun, Cambodia and Brazilian own, otherwise known, Tiago Teixeira. And here is the man. First fight in 10 months, as you said, Raf. And he comes out with smile on face, already throwing shadows. And the crowd did get up for him. He's very happy. Clearly very happy to be back in the ring. Raf, you've been training with him again. They're going both flags on it. They're going Brazil and Cambodia flag on it. Pearly whites being shown by Sen. Fireworks, man. Again, the fan favorite inside the Gansberg ring right now, right? But just because he's the fan favorite, he did take some time off. Although, again, time off for a guy with over 109 fights. It's not really time off. Right? This is a small break. Just a small break. Welcome back. Welcome back. And, of course, our Cambodian counterparts telling Tiago, welcome back, welcome back. These are big boys, John. Yeah, I said, you, you said that he's quite strong. Quite strong. Quite strong. Yeah, quite strong. And I thought I was strong. Yeah. I am not. That power, that's some good power. Getting ready for the Kung Crew. <coughs> Traditional music. Kung Kamir, and again, show the respect to the heritage and the culture of the sport. Tiago still gets the red gloves put on and taped up. My man from Turkey, Sinan, already in his blue corner, already wrapped up and ready to go. There it is, the introduction for Sun Chanritikon, a.k.a. Tiago. Again, the newly adopted son of Cambodia, if you will. Looking stone cold killer right now, man. I like this guy, Sinan. Doesn't seem to be intimidated that he's here in his opponent's home turf, if you will. Ready to get down on the get down. Again, 36 fights, 32 wins, and 16 KOs. That is a dangerous man. 37 years young versus 35 for Sen. Turkey in the blue corner. Cambodia, Brazil in the red corner. And it is the Gansberg Ring. 
Yes, it is. Some some interesting backstory behind the Honey Badger. He used to fight as a heavyweight. Heavyweight. Over 100 kg? 100 kg. Right, so yeah. now he's getting down to what? 75. 75. Good for him, right? Kudos to that guy. At 180 cm, I'm 193, 194, right? So, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a big boy, but uh, at 100 kg, man, that must have been like a cylindrical human being, right? He would have been thick. So when I spoke to him about the time, the times that he was fighting heavyweight, his opponent was 120 while he was 90 kilos. Okay. So he, so even though he was fighting heavyweight, he still gave up weight to right. his opponent. So You're probably a natural light heavyweight if you were going by that 93.5 kg, about but but not tall enough of a old glass of water, if you will, to but keep that weight. Because I mean, he's still got some meat on him right now. He could probably go a little bit lower if he wanted to. He, he probably Tiago's sure. got some meat on him too right now. Like neither of these guys are are showing packs like in some of their previous, I would say. Big boys though, big boys. Big boys got power. They do have power and three rounds is perfect for big boys at this weight class. Look for a lot of right hands to be landed from both these fighters. Tiago being draped in a Cambodian flag. He is the son of Cambodia. And it got, again, it does show the uh, lovely people of Cambodia and, and how awesome they are at once again accepting foreigners here. You know, kudos to you guys. Our Gansberg ring girl coming to the Gansberg ring. What round is it, Raf? Do you know? Championship round, round number one, coming to you in just a moment. It's going to be fantastic again. ISKA Idol Kun Kamir Championship action on the way. Let's get up and let's get Il Kun Kamir fans. This is Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir. Tiago Teixeira, red corner, takes on Sinan Kagara, the honey badger in the blue. Here we go, John, ISKA, 75 kilogram Kung Kamer Championship belt up for grabs. Touch of gloves, here we go. Round one, let's see who sets the pace. Low kick from the Honey Badger, Sinan going with a left body kick. Tiago still pressuring forward, trying to land that team. Guys, both staying very, very calm in there right away. Going for spinning stuff possibly or right off the bat is my man from Turkey. Very thick legs and Tiago decides to spin. Low kick lands for Sinan. Sinan very high guard. Left Goes body kick for Tiago. Into the clinch they go. Tiago being able to get down, down position. Watch for the right, the right elbow from Tiago, broken up by the ref. Referee brings him back to center Gansberg stage as Tiago tries to go up. Goes up top, and again, big overhand right coming from the blue corner, and you could hear the cracks. I mean, you get the bigger boys in there, you're gonna hear that, but that was, that was pretty awesome right there. That sounded, that was a baseball bat. Did he go up into the crotch? No. Sen does not make it. Big upward elbow coming from the man from Turkey. Tiago again pressure forward. Beautiful right kick into a right cross from Tiago. Left body kick as Sinan tries to come in. Sinan with a right knee though. Big left hook for Tiago, but Sinan walking through it. Sinan really looking for that right overhand. Step in left elbow from Tiago. Step in left elbow from Sinan. These boys train elbows. Both guys trading those, trying to make their mark. Tiago staying a little bit more calmer as he comes up with that kick again, goes to the body, and we clinch up. Right. Sinan is doing a great job of staying com uh, composed. And again, he says that there's a low knee. Referee trying to get him in there, but they are tussling. Tiago really showing a lot of dominance in the clinch. That might be his key to victory here.
spin and back kick missing for Tiago. Left hook lands for Tiago. Left knee for Tiago. Left hook for Tiago. Tiago coming forward into that clinch. They go. Big knees landing for Tiago. Backed him up again. Referee going to split up the action again. Fantastic job by our referee keeping the pace going. Tiago again up on the toes and ready to go. Sinan again catches another one that sounds like a clap. Every single time Sinan goes into Southpaw, Tiago very easily throws that right kick into the right cross. There's no counter from Sinan right now. We need to see Sinan try to land more than that big right overhand. Yeah, and we came to the end of round two. Again, fantastic round there by both men. I would say Sinan staying very cautious of Tiago, knows the reputation of Tiago. But again, if he stays that way all three rounds, this is just going in his opponent's favor. I think Sinan needs to get behind a jab. He needs to start, start throwing a, a stiff jab, and that's how he'll be able to land that right hand. But, of course, that's easier said than done when you have Tiago Teixeira across from you in, in the ring. Both guys are staying very relaxed in there. Again, uh, Tiago over there, he has a little bit of ice on his, on his neck. He's received all his instructions, nodding him off. Doesn't really worry. Sinan, on the other hand, over there in the blue corner, getting the massage up. A lot of pressure being put on his stomach. He had that very high guard. We were talking about both of them staying very traditional with the high guard. I feel like for, again, Sinan, he's keeping that hard, high guard for that left hook. Right, what you said when he switches to southpaw. I don't know, Tiago. Yeah, Tiago bangs it. And each one of those are the loudest hits we've heard of the night. I mean, right? Every time, every time so that loud. heavy right kick. Shin right across the forearms, and that's gonna hurt a lot, especially if we go into the second and third round. Yeah, Tiago again. No deep breaths coming from him. Breathing out of his nose, staying very relaxed. Sanan the same way over in the blue corner. Getting his last stretch on before turning it on in round number two. About seven, main event of the evening championship, ISKA Kun Kamir, title on the line. Let's get up and let's get out, Kun Kamir fans. This is round number two. Let's look at the replays. It's that right kick into that right cross. And every time they go, beautiful left step and elbow from the Turkish fighter, but every time they go into the clinch, Tiago just gets this, seems to be the stronger fighter in the clinch, landing the cleaner knees and the shorter elbows. Round number two, great smile there, great hair. Wonderful hair. Pantene Pro-V, why aren't you on board with the sponsor? Gansberg is, you guys should be too. Lovely hair. And again, Tiago, Sinan. Round number two gets underway. I'm liking this rhythm that Tiago is doing. He's try trying to create this rhythm. Inside kick for the Honey Badger. Low kick for the Honey Badger. Seems like Sinan's trying to attack the legs. Exchange of hands from both fighters. He tried to come with that upward elbow from the blue corner and again, didn't land it. But again, you can see now he's varying his, his weapons, right? He just went up top and down low. I can't tell if uh, Tiago's tat was hit right there or not. Again, on the eye. They do go to the ground. Great job by the referee again. That was a great yeah. job by the ref. Catch, catching the head, well oh, done. Yeah. Oh, that was a left, another left elbow lands for Sinan. That's two left elbows that land. That staggered Tiago. Yeah, it did look like it lost his breath in it, therefore he didn't. Brings up the left leg, staying very composed. And Sinan not just chasing it, right? He's not just staying with that left elbow. Tiago there complaining of a lower back break. 
the ref going to warn him, you cannot grab the lower back and fold your opponent over like that. Tries to go to the body and goes to the head. We come back up into the clinch. Both guys try to throw a knee. Referee will step in and separate the action. Right, Over. Hand, right hand just missing for Sinan. Caught on the shoulder of Tiago. Right, right hand lands for Tiago. The crowd goes go, going crazy. Left body hook for Tiago and then catches an opponent taking his back. Yeah, good sportsmanship shown by Tiago as to not just unleash as he goes for more spinning stuff. Big overhand right swing and a miss. Good trade of legs there, up high and down low. Another swing and a miss. Tiago lands that leg. Right elbow from Tiago. Tiago, beautiful step in left knee into the clinch state go. Good turn and dump by Tiago. Really being dominant in the clinch is Tiago. Sanan trying to step in with that left elbow that he did before. But Tiago already smart to it. That right kick from Tiago keeps that in so heavily. And as the bell rings, big right elbow lands for Tiago and the crowd absolutely loving it. Yeah, wonderful round there and a great way to finish it off for Tiago. You know, we saw a plethora of elbows in that round. And it wasn't just from Diago. We did notice those two upward elbows coming from the man from Turkey out of the blue corner, Sinan. I think, again, he, he needs to vary those and he needs to come back with them because they did land. They did take some of the power out of Diago. And personally, again, I think that he needs to get on there. His corner is even saying it to him right now in order to win this, right? Diago, although... Brazilian Cambodian, if you will, is on home turf. Yes, and again, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. I don't know if Sinan is doing enough here after the two rounds to have scored this in the favor of the uh, the scorecards of the judges. That being said, I've already been wrong tonight, so <laughs> I will keep my tongue lashed up and leashed. Tiago getting his uh, last bits of information in his corner. Raf, how do you see it? John, I, I, I gotta agree with you. I think that Tiago is able to take those first two rounds. Sanan is just trying to find that right overhand and and even though he had success with the step in left elbow, now he's trying to force it. He's not setting up his shots. He's trying to force big effective damage and shots, but he's just trying to force it. There, there is no setup and that's what he's missing. Third and final round coming up. Gansberg, Idol Kunkamir again, April 7th, 2024. Championship ISKA 75 kg belt on the line. John, I would love to see Tiago in this third round try to push the pace, try to go forward and engage in the clinch and drown out his opponent. You'd like to see that, I'd like to see that. I think we'd all like to see that. Who will? come into this Gansberg ring of this third and final round of championship action and take home this W. That's a good replay. That right hand landed on the top of the head. Sanan does have power in that right hand. There, there's the one right there. And you can clearly see that that landed. That was a great Gansberg replay. Thank you to the brewmaster. Can't start up the action without the Gansberg girls, though. Referee Tommy Hayden learned that earlier in the night. Yes, he did. Seconds out, third and final round. ISKA Kunkamur, 75 kilogram title up for grabs. Third and final round, touch of gloves. Low kick from Sinan, blocked and checked by Tiago.
left body kick from Tiago. Doing well to keep his opponent back. Checks two low kicks from Sinan. Beautiful short left hook from Tiago as Sinan was coming in with that left step and elbow. Into the clinch they go, broken up by the ref. Again, a nice high guard from the blue corner, not trying to get any kicks landed on his dome piece right now. Here in the third and final round, Tiago brings up that left leg and it is traded. And again, they both go. I, I would still say that I agree with Raf. Somebody needs to get up on the pedal, throw it to the metal, and once again, step on the pace, boys. Definitely, John. Sonata is down by two rounds. He, he needs to set up that right hand. He's just throwing it blind. They're both trying to wipe their feet off so much because of that ice. Great upward kick comes. Goes yeah. to the body as he gets the kick and he comes in with the knee. The clinch is put in again. <clears throat> Referee will split it up, I'm sure, as Tiago gets one more right knee on there. The music picks up. We know we're coming to the end of the third and final round of this again. ISKA, Kung Kamir Idol Fight Championship action in 75 kg. Tiago throws a couple more kicks like that, and it's it's all she wrote. That left kick just keeps landing for Tiago. Whatever he wants to throw it, it lands clean on the guard of Sinan. Yet again, right there in the forearms. Oh, it's not asking for more. Surprised that uh, Sen Chandriti Kun did not reply right there with that kick. Again, if somebody's asking for it, might as well just give it, to, give them what they want. Might as well. You're two rounds up. Correct. Right kick from Tiago. That Tiago. leg is so big and heavy, man. I would not would be kicked by him. Jumping right knee from Tiago. Sanan telling him there's no effect there. Touch of gloves. Sanan's got to go if he wants to make something happen here. Beautiful step in right knee from Tiago. And that will do it for the last round. And That's go. all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. They both go up onto the corners. They're both trying to get love from the audience. Both trying to sway it. But again, I think it's a little too little too late. As we go to the replay, the Gansberg replay, you can see those elbows. And that was the one where my man from Turkey just landed it flush. It was great, but I just think, again, it's not enough. When Tiago got elbows like that, the kicks were landing, the clap snap of the bat was hearing, everybody here got their shock on. And John, the crowd already dispersed it. I think everyone knows who the winner was of this fight. Yeah, of course. Fantastic night of classic championship Kun Kamir action as Tiago waves the Cambodian flag up high and we get the judges their scorecards. We will go to the deliberation for your winner in just a few moments. Tiago Sen Chandriti Kun, Cambodia and Brazil's own. ជួបជាមួយនឹងបាទលោកស៊ីធូរណាខានបាននឹងលោកគីមសងដើរលើរិញទាំងអស់គ្នាបាទបាទព្រឹកមារពោះបាយរបស់អស់គ្នាវាស
The ISKA belt trophy is being brought down. The brewmaster is in there. The VIPs are in there. The judges' scorecards have been tallied. Alberto is right over there looking good. The man from Mexico in Cambodia. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, your new champion, ISKA Kun Kamir, 75 kg title holder, is Cambodia, Brazil's own Sen Chandriti Kun, a.k.a. Tiago Teixeira. The lights have come up, the flares are going, the celebration has started from myself and Raphael and everybody here at Bayon TV, Gansberg, Idol Kun Kamir, this has been a fantastic uh, show. This has been a fantastic night. More Gansberg Idol Kun Kamir shortly to come. Raphael, any last thoughts? Amazing night of fights. We have been so lucky to be in attendance for the golden era of Kun Kamir. We will see everyone back here next month. The golden age of Kun Kamir is brought to you by Gansberg Bayon TV, Boost Strong and Freshy. Idol, Kun Kamir, you should go there. បាទនេះជាការចងចាំមួយដែលមិនអាចផ្លិចបាននៅក្នុងទំព័រប្រវត្តិសាស្ត្រដ៏អស្ចារ្យដែលមានការប្រកួតដណ្ដើមខ្ស